Hello, and today I'm going to talk to you, talk you through how to do the UKCA tutorials at year end version 13. Um, before we start these, uh, we're just going to have a little look at the background uh, and motivation behind these uh, tutorials. So the important thing about the tutorials is they're designed to show you what are the most common things that a new user of UKCA will need to know when they start uh, when they start actually working with the model. You might want to think about adding new reactions, changing emissions, deposition, looking at fluxes and that sort of thing. And the whole of these tutorials is actually one giant task built around the addition of one chemical reaction involving two new species and then looking at the impacts of that. Um, this involves quite a lot of code changes, um, make creating new emissions files, working with UM files, um, making changes to the, the unified model uh, graphical user interface, which is called ROSE, um, changing metadata and that sort of thing. And while it's one big task, the tutorial is broken down into um, 13 tutorials in five sections. Um, the first four deal with kind of this, this task themselves and the last uh, section, tutorial 13, takes a look in more detail about how to work with UKCA data. Um, so we're gonna work through these in sequence um, and uh, you'll see how uh, UKCA can be adapted and modified for your own use. So um, the first task is to run an additional UKCA box model suite. So I've uh, made up a, a virtual machine that I can connect to. Um, this virtual machine um, uh, runs on AWS and it allows me to run all the tutorials. You could either, you may end up using AWS for your work or you may end up making a, a virtual machine on, a, on your own server. Um, the first thing I'm asked when I log in is for my MetOffice Science Repository password. Um, uh, and, uh, and username. So if you're working over these tutorials over a number of days, you'll need to uh, recache your password each day. If you're working through it in, in one session, you might be able to get away without doing that. So the first thing we're going to do is run an existing UKCA box model suite. Um, to do this, we need to take a copy of uh, uh, this suite U-CQ774, and we can use this ROSI command here to uh, copy the suite. It brings up a little text uh, box where we can uh, save what we're going to do, uh, uh, save what it's called. Um, I'm not going to make any changes to this, but you might want to add some more descriptive text. So we're going to make this by pressing Y, and it will then make a new copy, which is called U-CW993 in this case. And we can see this in our roses directory. We can see it there. So we can CD into that, and we can use rose edit to open the suite and play around with the settings. Um, now, we can either run it in two different ways. We can either click this little play button here, or we can type rose suite run on the command line. Either of them works exactly the same way. Sometimes it's uh, useful to use the command line rather than to use the, the play buttons because they're slightly easier to add um, more controlling commands in there. Um, so this is a rather simple suite. It has two different things. It makes the box model, it compiles it up from the source code, and then it will run UKCA. Um, while that's running, um, we can take a look at the suite itself. Um, so one thing that's important to remember about all these suites um, is that they are um, uh, they are under version control using a system called FCM. So we can add, we can we can control very uh, exactly and, and make copies and make backups of what our suites are doing at any one time and what the configurations are. Um, as it says in the tutorial, this is using a version of this box model suite, which has already been checked out to your uh, to your um, virtual machine if you're using one that's been pre-made. Um, and it takes a few minutes to compile the first time. If you recompile it again a second time, it will be, be quicker the next time around. Mm. 
once it's been built, we can take a look at the directory structure. You can see what the um, how the files are organized, where things are. Um, and we can take a look through the settings. So as I say, this is the, the FCM make section. This is telling it how it compiles. This is where the branches go. So when you make your own branch to include, you'll be uh, adding a new line here to include your, your branch. In terms of the settings for UKCA, we've got uh, various uh, IO settings, input uh, and out model input and output. So these will be editing during tutorials to make some changes. And we also have science settings. Um, so we can have a look at the chemistry um, uh, that's used in the model. Uh, this is the heterogeneous chemistry. This is the main top level chemistry here. We can look at how trace gases are set. Um, and there are, might also be settings in the, the Glem up aerosol routine. There are short term logicals that we can play around with that, that uh, we're not actually going to make any changes to these at the moment, but you, you might want to play around with these at some point. Uh, once it's built, we'll be able to view the output. There's a few different ways of viewing this. Um, uh, you can either use something like GNU plot or there's a Python uh, Jupyter notebook that uh, I'll be able to show you um, when the when the job is run. So you can see that's just quickly finished there. So let's first have a look at the output. Um, so if we cd into our silk run directory, we're in here, we can take a look at the, the directory structure and the output is in the work directory. We can see two things, this FCM make, which is the build process at UKCA itself. And if we have a look in there, um, we can see uh, a number of different things. We've got these tracer parse files, which define things as well as these output files. So tracer out.csv, for instance. Um, and so we can we can view this tracer out. We could we could use something like numeric, which is a, a, um, a, a kind of simple Linux uh, spreadsheet program. So let's have a look using that. You can see what the structure looks like. Um, and uh, we've got 24 time steps. We're running for over a single day with one hour chemical time steps, uh, which is the, the same chemical time step that's used when it's running the unified model. We've got our initial concentrations, um, and then we have the evolving concentrations over the length of the run. So we can see that these uh, change, some of them. Uh, well, it's easy to see them when they're plotted. So if we close this down, we could use something like GNU plot. And uh, so we can use a kind of plotting command like this. And this will bring up a, a plot here. So this, this is um, ozone. Um, and we can see ozone has varied during the day. Uh, we could do something a bit more complicated. We could set titles and uh, and formatting and make a make a quite a pretty plot with it. Um, the other way of looking at this is with a Jupyter notebook. Um, so um, the first first thing we need to do is to run the jlab command uh, and this will uh, uh, file, fire up a Jupyter notebook for us. Uh, we just need to leave this. It will open a new terminal and start running the Jupyter notebook. Um, and once that's loaded up, we can then uh, Load the Jupyter notebook up. So here it is here. Um, and what we need to do is view the go to the tutorials directory and find this box model uh, script. So uh, 
So this one here. And so what we need to do is set our run ID. So our run ID is uh, u-cw993. And we just want to plot ozone. So you can click run. So I click run the whole uh, run the whole kernel, um, and it will start and load everything, and uh, read in the file and plot it. Interesting. Oh. oh, I've got the wrong run ID, haven't I? 933, not 993. So this has worked. And there's the same ozone plot that we've got there. We can also plot reaction fluxes. This is plotting one particular reaction flux out of the model. So these are things you can you can check you can do you can list suites um, if you wanted to you could use Rosie Go um, you can copy suites run suites and plot output so with that we'll go on to tutorial two so in tutorial two we're going to be making a load of changes and seeing seeing what these do um, so what we'll do is make some changes to time settings within the model so. Uh, at the moment, the day is beginning with uh, mid it starts at midnight. So what we want to do is change it so it starts at midday. And we can see where these time settings are set here. So we want to find um, the uh, model basis time. And so we can go back to our suite um, and we can uh, look at the time settings tab. We can see our model basis time and this is set to start 19 in the 1st of September 1981 at midnight here which is the um, it's years months days hours minutes and seconds so uh, this is starting midnight September the 1st we want to do is start at midday rather than midnight so what we can do here is change this to 12 click save and click run and this will Bring up a suite again, so I can, and it will uh, it should compile rather quickly this time, um, as you can see, and then it will run again for a few seconds, and so that's completed, and that's finished those files. And what we can do is go back to the Jupyter notebook, and we can rerun this notebook again, and we can see how this has affected our our output. You can see we've got a plot like this and if we have a look at our work solution we can we just change the value to 12 that's that's fine we'll replot it and if you need to you can see what the work solution is here and we change our model basis time um so what we really want to do now is increase the run length so we want to change it to five model days again we come back to this table we can see the time settings run length is on this run target end it's currently set to one day so if we come to run target end we can change that one to a five we can click save and we can click run so again it should be rather quick finished so now if we rerun this uh, notebook again we can see that we've now got model evolution over five days um, and again it matches with the the work answer now we can change the time step so 
coming back to our table, time setting, steps per period IM. This is the dynamical time steps of the model. And the chemical time step is, uh, so there's 24 time steps in a day. So, um, but there are chemical time step is 3,600, which is in seconds. Um, so that's one hour. Um, and what we want to do is change the time step to be 30 minutes. Um, and we can do that uh, in the model here. So what we'll do is change uh, the steps of period IM to be 48. And then we need to change the chemical time step, uh, which is not set in this time settings. It's set under chemistry here. So we need to change that to 1800. Um, so that's 1800. That's 48. Click play. And this might be a ever so slightly slower to run. You may not notice it though, because it's now doing twice the amount of work for the same length of time. And so we can come back here, we can click restart, and it will replot our time. So here we go. Can't really see a difference because uh, it's still running for five days, but now it's running for five days with a shorter time step. So as well as changing, um, as well as changing the, uh, um, the, the time settings, we could also change the different environments that we're running in. So this is uh, set in the, uh, the model input and output panel uh, of rows. So these are these settings here. So um, they, there are three different examples provided. So we have a kind of surface conditions box, a, uh, a box around the tropopores and a box uh, in the stratosphere. Um, and these have various uh, settings that are used in the model, some of which may not be used for particular things. So these offline oxidants would only be used if we're running with the offline oxidant scheme. Um, and what we, could, what we could do is change the box to run in the stratosphere rather than at the surface. Now we're not changing anything else. That's not necessarily entirely chemically correct, but um, we can put it into the box model and see what happens. So what we want to do is change this to be the strats box. Um, and we can run that. So. So that's finished. And then we can rerun our Jupyter notebook. So we can see again how the ozone is changing. We just change the box to, to strat. Um, we can also change the chemistry scheme. So if you're familiar with using the UM, uh, this is actually quite uh, it, it's it's not as straightforward to do within the UM as it is to do within uh, the box model. Um, so uh, what we can do now is use the offline oxidant scheme to drive GLOMAP mode rather than uh, to uh, rather than to use the stratosphere troposphere scheme, which is the default scheme we, that we're using at the moment. So again, this is done in the science settings panel. What we can do here is change this to offline oxidants. Um, here, this will make loads of other changes. We see these little blue dots coming. We don't have to worry about those at the moment. Um, that's kind of turning things off that, uh, that aren't used anymore. And we can run our model. So, 
So what we can do is, because we, we, we haven't got a scheme that's particularly interesting for ozone anymore, we can look at some other fields. So rather than say looking at uh, ozone, we can look at SO2. So here's SO2. You'll notice it has a failure with this flux uh, because um, the the numbers of fluxes is now much much shorter. Um, so I'm looking trying to find flux uh, number 201, but actually there is no flux 201. Uh, so but SO2 MMR again looks looks the same. If we wanted to try um, one of the uh, accumulation modes, we could look at one of the accumulation modes. So we can we can see those there, and in fact, if we look at the solution, it's just change it to to fifty four. Um, we can also change initial values. So we haven't changed initial values; these were still set to the values for the that we're running in the stratosphere troposphere scheme. So that's this this file here. So stratosphere troposphere with climate mode aerosols. Um, we can set default values using this trace and null val. So it's kind of set to a very low concentration. Um, and we can we can set those things there. Currently, the box model doesn't run any emissions de depositional photolysis. It reads in a, a photolysis a rate file. Um, and as we develop the box model further, the, those uh, options will start to be turned on. Um, so what we want to do now, we've got a slightly more complicated task. We want to use the stratosphere troposphere scheme around the tropopause. So uh, what we need to do now, we could switch back to stratosphere troposphere and we go to model input and output and we're in the, the strat here. So we need to change this. We need to pick up a tropospheric box. So we need to, to get this box here. And we can click run. It's already running. Um, so So let's go back to plotting ozone. Um, oh, sorry, we haven't changed our concentrations either. So we need to make sure that we use this, uh, this setting as well, I missed that. So so we run that again. finished and that's now what it should be for this task so now we can try turning off glomap mode and aerosol chemistry so sometimes you may not want to run with glomap mode on you might want to just run with the chemistry on for instance um, there are two logicals to, to that, that fit here so we have um, a logical controlling the aerosol chemistry and a logical controlling the aerosols themselves. You can run without the aerosols, but still include the aerosol chemistry uh, if you would like. 
The other thing to think about here is the heterogeneous chemistry. This is a coupling between the chemistry and the aerosols. Um, so currently the, the, um, uh, the aerosol scheme uh, is used, uh, the, the kind of surface area of the aerosols is used in the heterogeneous chemistry scheme. So what we need to be careful of here is if we turn off the aerosols, we then won't have these, um, uh, we then won't have these uh, aerosols to do these reactions on. So in the next uh, task, when we turn off the glomer aerosol scheme and the additional aerosol chemistry, we also need to be careful of the, uh, the heterogeneous chemistry. So um, uh, what we want to do first uh, is also we're going to use the cry strat scheme for this. Um, so what we're going to do here is if we go to the science settings, we change this to cry strat. Um, and we also want to turn off gamut mode and the additional aerosol chemistry that's here. So we're going to turn off this and this. Sorry, turn off this, turn off this. Um, so we've done that. Let's just see what happens if we run this. So now we've got a failure um, and we can view what the error message for this failure is uh, by looking in the, the error file uh, in, in Silk. And so we can see here, so LUKCA HEP PSC surface area undefined. So we need at least uh, one from LUKCA SA claim and LUKCA GLOMA has to be selected. So of course we haven't, we've turned off the, the GLOMA mode aerosols. Um, so what we need to do now is also turn off the heterogeneous chemistry. So uh, we'll stop this suite because if it's if it's even if it's a stopped state, but it's still technically classed as running suite, um, and that means we won't be able to restart the job uh, again with it in that state. So what we want to do is go to this HEC chem here, and we can turn off LUK HEC PSC. We can save that. We can click Run now. And that's su succeeded. So that ran successfully. And we can rerun our Jupyter notebook. And we can see some ozone. And that's kind of what we'd expect. So again, if we look at the solution, we need to remember this HEP PSC term, as well as turning off these aerosol terms. Um, and that's it. We've had a good play around with settings. We can change the time steps, the basis time, environment conditions, all these other things like that. And we're happy. We can move on now to tutorial three. So in this tutorial, what we're now going to do is start doing some, some actual changes to the UKCA code. We're going to add these two new chemical tracers, Alice and Bob. Um, what we're going to need to do now is work with the UKCA uh, repository. Um, so we're going to be working here. Um, so this is the same username and password that, that you used when you logged in to Mozers in the tutorial. Um, so I'm logged in as me. This is the UKCA. Uh, track page. Um, we're under a BSD3 license, so uh, everything is open source, so it is held on Mozers. Um, if you do make any changes to the trunk, you will need to agree to the uh, license agreement. Um, and if you are developing for the trunk, you need to work through the working practices. We're just working for the tutorials at the moment. We don't need to worry about those sorts of things uh, so much right now. 
Um, so what we need to do now is make a new ticket. So we're going to do a new ticket here. And we're going to say, you know, we need to give it a title. Um, uh, and we're enhancing the model. Um, we're going to as a not for builds because this is a, um, uh, this is just for, for this training and we create this ticket. So I've got ticket 110. I need to modify the ticket and say start work because we're starting the work now. So I've got my new uh, ticket, ticket number 110. Um, and I've made an example ticket, uh, 33, which you can, which you can view. Um, and I've got a link to the, to the solutions branch uh, here. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a branch. Um, so the key things to remember here are the ticket number. So this is this number here we've just made, 1110. A name. So this name will not include, you don't need to put a version or anything. That's going to be added for you. And we're working at UM13 uh, here. Um, there are later versions of UKCA, but these tutorials are built around UM13. So this is what we're going to need to do. So we will copy this line here. And if we come to uh, here, so I'm going to give it a branch name. So tutorial work and ticket number. 110. So this will now open up a text editor. Uh, so it's generally good practice. Um, and we're using uh, track. It's good practice to, if you put the ticket number with a hash in front of it, uh, and then your username, these become clickable links on the track pages. So it's kind of helpful to, to see what's going on. So I'm in ticket 110. My username is Luke Abraham. And I'm going to be, you know, branch for UKCA tutorial work and save and quit. I'm going to make this branch and now I can check this branch out. So I copy this here. I use FCM checkout the branch and there we go. It's rather quick because there's not many files. Um, and uh, so you check out your branch, you've got these list of files here. So uh, what we need to do now is use this branch in our suite. In our suite. So uh, we've got our tutorial work branch. Um, so what we want to do is come to our suite, go to our sources page. And again, slash home slash vagrant tutorial work. Now, currently, this branch is exactly like the UKCA trunk. We haven't got any changes in it yet. What we're doing is we're just going to put it into the suite so it's kind of there as a placeholder and able to be used. Um, you could, if you wanted to, you could specify the branch on Mozers. This is done in a slightly different way. So you'd put branches dev your username and the name of your branch, and then you might need to put a revision number. The, uh, when you're developing code, it's often better to keep it through the working copy, which is this solution here. If you do it through the re uh, repository, you have to keep committing. And remember to, re to regularly commit, otherwise the changes you make in the working copy won't get picked up by the suite. So it can be a bit confusing. However, when you want to run a job for say a production job for an experiment, you're, you know, you're gonna write a paper on it, you're gonna do work for your PhD or your postdoc, um, what you need to do then is, uh, I would suggest, is work from the repository with a fixed revision. You can also commit the changes to your suite to revision and make a note of those. So if you have to go back and rerun anything, you've got everything fixed at the, the version numbers that you need. Um, so I can actually see because our suite is under version control. So we go here, if I do an FCM diff, we can see all the changes that have been made. 
uh, through the previous tutorials, but if we scroll up, we can see uh, the branch changes and there's the branch changes there that have gone in. Um, so now what we need to do is include our new chemical traces that we're running. So these are a few different things that we have to edit. Uh, and the files are listed here. So we need to edit the chem master file. So this is the list of species that are used in the model in the chemistry scheme. Um, we need to tell how many traces there are for the chemical mechanism. We have to define some conversion factors. Um, this is because while UKCA internally uses a volume mixture ratio or mole fraction um, within the unified model and other uh, general circulation models, it will use a mass mixing ratio. So we convert between the two and we need a conversion factor for that. And we need to put these conversion factors somewhere. And, and that, that's basically what we're doing here. These two new traces we're going to be editing are called Alice and Bob. Um, so these are kind of fixed because we uh, they're not real traces, but they're a good uh, example of, of what we can use. So the first thing we're going to do is look at this routine here. So if I uh, go to my branch, if I see the UM 13.0 uh, tutorial work, um, I can open this. Now you can use whatever text editor you like. Uh, I'm a, personally, I'm a fan of Emacs, but there are other text editors available on the, uh, on the virtual machine. So what we want to do now um, is add in our Alice and Bob tracer. Um, so uh, what we need to do is go to the end of our uh, list. We want to add in Alice and Bob. So got quite a lot of species this is because the cry strat scheme is rather large um, but we want to add these in uh, to the uh, to the list so what we're going to do we're going to add them in after this uh, maco3 tracer so we'll just copy these lines paste them in. So this is going to be 284, 285. Now these strings here are a fixed length. So we need to make sure that they are 10 characters each. Now these species here are set for Chrystrat only. Now we want to include them in Stratrop and Chrystrat. Um, so well, Fortran doesn't actually matter about case. I will do them in lowercase, but the species names need to be in uppercase. Um, also, we don't need this qualifier here. So we'll set this to zero. And we're going to be using the, the latest version number here. Now we just need to fix the length of the line. Um, now, if you'll notice, there isn't a comma at the end of this line here, but this will cause an error if we try and compile it because it's a list uh, or a, a list of arrays, and we'll do that there. So we've now got the commas in the right place. We've got Alice and Bob added at 284 and 285. Now, because we put this in a, in a big long list of things, what we also need to do is change the number of uh, species that we're having. So this is set in this uh, NC8 master array here. So it was 356. We've added two more. So it's now 358. Uh, and in fact, this is defined here. So we need to add these in here, increment the size of NC8 CH master. So what we want to look at uh, here now we just want to do this config defs mod. Um, so we can pick it out using Emacs source control core 
top level, uh, case of the config defs mod. Um, and this one uh, has various blocks within it that define various sizes of various things. We, we're adding in Alice and Bob to both the strat drop and the cry strat schemes. Um, so we need to uh, make sure we edit config devs uh, config devs most correctly uh, and in the right places. Note that Crystrat um, has two different versions, version one and a version two. And so version one is previous to UK State Chemistry version 119. So we need to put it in version two, not version one. Um, so we're also going, it's also talking about the, the ACHEM. So this is the service of chemistry, uh, logical. Um, we can increment the number of chemical traces by two in, in these if blocks, because um, this, this, this trace is not defined to be for aerosol chemistry only. Um, if the traces were only aerosol chemistry traces, you'd only put them uh, within that one, but we're using, um, we're using it for both. So what we need to do now, it's quite a long routine. It goes through lots of different things, but they're specified. So we've got this TROP scheme, um, this air chem scheme, which is uh, for, the, for the TROP. We've got this rack scheme, which is used for um, air quality, offline scheme, which is used to, to drive the global atmosphere. And now we come into this um, STRAT, STRAT TROP or STRAT CFC. So that's the STRAT scheme. That's the STRAT, that's strat TROP scheme there. So um, what we need to do here uh, is we've got NCHEM traces here is 70, 71. Um, what we need to do is increase that. So this is with, this is not ACHEM, but we could, we've said we're going to be using this with and without ACHEM, so we can increase that to 73. And then this is with ACHEM. So again, we increase that to 73 for strat drop. And now we need to think about the cry strat scheme. Um, so here's our cry strat scheme, not ACHEM, we're going to do it for both. And then we have if it's greater than or equal to version 119, so strat drop two, uh, cry strat two, sorry. So we're going to increase our NCHEM traces here to 173. Um, and we're also going to uh, increase. Uh, uh, so that's 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 the cry strap with that aerosol. We need to go down to the with aerosol and increase that to 173 there. You'll see that actually the original cry strap, cry strap version one, has slightly fewer chemical traces. We've got a few more in cry strap version two. So we've increased our number of chemical traces there. It's a little bit fiddly, so do be careful as you go through this uh, file to make sure that you've got it in the right places. Um, What we need to now do is look at the constants. Um, and what we're told here is that we're going to be adding in a conversion factor of one. And in fact, in the task, it specifies set the conversion factor to one for each. Uh, and this will be important later uh, when we think about emissions, but we won't think about that just yet. So we need to open the, uh, the uh, constants. So. So we need, there's a big long list of these conversion factors. And what we need to do now is go through and add in the tutorial traces. And so we can just copy uh, an existing one. So this is going to be Um, and so we need, we can just call them C Alice and C Bob again, Fortran is case insensitive, so uh, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, whether we learn capitals or not. So we've added them to constants. And then the last routine we need to look at is the C species. So this is actually where we tell there's a big long list and we tell it where to pick up this, these concentrations for. So what we do now is open the C species routine. And it... 
so we need to make sure we add in C Alice and C Bob from uh, the constants, otherwise it won't actually pick them up. And we've got this big long list and we want to put it in the C species. So So what we do here, we could have fixed it to, to one here, but for chemical species, we actually fix them to their name. And we're gonna say Alice. And again, it's a fixed length. We need to make sure we've got 10 characters for each. So you can check that, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And here we have C, C, Alice, and C, Bob. So that should be setting it there. So C species, we've added them in. So we've, we now need to edit our row suite. So currently, we can see what the chemistry version is in our row suite. Um, and as we've added in Alice and Bob to be at version 131, chemistry version here is at 121. These are related to UN version numbers. So 121 would be added in at 12.1. 131 is because we're working at version 13. So if the, if the code were committed, it would become relevant at version 13.1. But as it is, we put it in at version 13.1. We've used our branch already here. Um, and what we can do now is we don't need to do anything else uh, because we've got this trace of null val, which sets the initial concentration. So this here. So what should happen is any species that's not defined in this tracer in file name will get a, an, a, an automatic value of 1e to the minus 15 uh, uh, in terms of the concentration number. So that should hopefully be everything we need to do. We can click run. And if we've done everything correctly, it should compile without any errors. But that may not be the case. Um, so now the compile step will take a little bit of extra time uh, because we're um, because we're. Um, actually compiling some new code, it's picking it up from this branch. Um, so it won't be as quick as it was previously. If there's any errors, it would then have, as we saw uh, for one of the other tasks, it will, it will go red and we can look at the error file to see what that errors might be. As it is, it's compiled. As usual, when you're coding, you never know if it's run correctly first time, if it's actually working. We've now got an error here, so we must have done something slightly wrong somewhere. Um, so we've got an issue with ADBT. So we haven't got our sizes quite correct. So ADT, ADVT is the, the length of the advected, is the advected traces array. And if we've got something wrong with our array sizes, then we'll be having an issue. So what we can do, we can go here and just do an FCM diff minus G and just double check that our our differences that we think should be ha happening are happening. So if we look at uh, our config defs mog, now we should be running Christ strap because we haven't changed that since our last 
uh, run, I believe. So we're still running Christrat. So what we should have had is we've increased NCHEM traces for Strat Trop to 73 for both of those. And we've increased our Christrat 2 to 70, 173 for both of those. We've got an extra 100 traces. Um, so that's the only changes we've got here. So we've increased our NCAM master to 358. And then we've got, oh, hold on, that might be causing the issue, that double zero. May not be, but it might be. Got our C Alice and C Bob. And we are adding Alice and Bob to here. So potentially we've got an issue with um, that zero zero. So let's go back to our Chem Master. Search for Alice is probably the easiest way. So, so what we can do now is we can stop our suite. Um, and we can rerun our suite again to see if that was our issue. That's not our issue. So it's looking in the C species array. So what have I done in the C species array? So did we actually turn on our, we're using version 131, which is the chemistry version we need. So, ah, so we've got Alice appearing, but we don't have Bob appearing um, in our list. And we've got, still got JPCTRs 171. So. Aha, so this was my mistake here. I copied this 
Mac O3, but that is not actually a tracer. That's a different type of tracer, which is um, an RO2 species. Should have been set to be a tracer. So this should be, I believe, the fix that we need. So let's stop this again and let's see if this works. So that's compiling again. Uh, it's still failing, but hopefully it's failing with a different error. No, it's still got the same error. So that's set to a, that is set to be Alice now. So that's fine, but it's still not quite picking up that we have our extra species. So TH Masters 358. Aha. Uh -huh. So there's another thing we need to remember to correct. We must also increase these things here. These must be unique to each species. And again, this was a copy and paste error. I didn't pick up that I'd copied and paste. So now let's see if this works. Uh, so that's stopping. Let's give that a go. So that's compiled again. You see all of these compiled, but they failed at runtime. Now this hasn't come up with an error yet, so maybe we're in luck. And that seems to have completed successfully. So let's see if we can spot what Alice and Bob are looking like. So um, we can go to our Jupyter lab here. We can change this to Alice. And there's Alice and it's flat. You know, it's 10 to the minus 15, but it's there and it's run. Again, we can try this with Bob. And it's there and it's run. So that's great, but nothing is actually happening because um, we got, haven't got any chemical reactions or anything like that between these two species. Um, so there's no chemistry occurring. There's initialized small values. They'll stay those small values throughout the length of the run. If you need to, you can check your work, the work solutions to see where you, if you, if you have problems. Um, we were able to debug these problems here. What we want to do now is turn the aerosol settings back on. Um, we can test it in another chemistry scheme, essentially. So what we want to do now is come back here. So what we do is go to HECCHEM, turn it back on. Go to chemist. Uh, go to the science settings. Uh, we'll go for Stratrop. We'll turn those back on again. So we're running with aerosol chemistry with Stratrop. And let's try that. It's useful to test uh, these in different chemistry schemes. They should have been working in both. We just tested it in Cry-Strat. Now we're going to test it in Stratrop. And when we go to run it in the unified model, it will be Stratrop is the chemistry scheme that we run in. Again, that worked successfully. And if we come back to our Jupyter lab, we can just replot. Um, it won't change what they are because we haven't added, still haven't added in a chemical reaction. But what it will have is um, it will show that we, we are actually, actually getting evolution through the uh, 
through the run. Put that back to Alice. And there's Alice. Right. And again, we can see these, set these to 51. True, true, true for those logicals. Uh, so that's it. We've added Alice and Bob in. Uh, you've seen how to edit these files and seen how easy it is to make mistakes in these files, uh, doing copy and paste errors. Um, and you change the version, you test with multiple chemistry schemes. Let's move to tutorial four. So tutorial four, uh, what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is adding in chemical reaction between Alice and Bob. Um, and if you want to see more detail on how the, the solver works, I can recommend the Essen Turkatel paper from 2018, which is really uh, goes into a lot of detail about how the solver works. And what we're going to be doing is adding our arrays to UKC Chem Master um, and setting the, the values of NR Therm and NR FOS if we're doing photolysis, which we won't in these tutorials um, in the config defs model. Now, there are four different types of reaction that are defined in uh, UKCA. We have bimolecular reactions, uh, termolecular reactions, uh, heterogeneous reactions, which occur on surfaces, and photolysis reactions. We're going to be editing the bimolecular reactions in this tutorial. Um, termolecular is defined in a similar way. Uh, heterogeneous reactions, you might have to do put some extra code in. Um, or you will probably have to put some extra code in photolysis again, you define it differently through the, through the photolysis schemes. Um, you might also need, even with a bimolecular reaction, to put in additional code. We don't need to put in additional code in this case um, if it's a kind of non-standard non form. Um, uh, and if you look through the web pages, you'll see in more detail about, about what's going on. Um, our particular task is we need to have a reaction, Alice plus OH goes to Bob plus this secondary organic compound with these rates of reactions here. And once we've completed it successfully, we can plot things in this Jupyter notebook. So what we're going to do uh, is we need to go to uh, the files we need to change, our uh, UKSA Chem Master, uh, which we've been editing already, and Config Desk Models, which we've been editing already. So what we want to do now is we want to go down to the bimolecular reactions. This is defined by RAT B. Uh, so these are RAT B. RAT B is very long. There's lots of reactions in RAT B. So bimolecular rates. And we have to go right down to the end. And again, we don't want to make the mistakes we made before. So. So what we're going to do first, we need to remember to add a comma here and here. And what we're going to do, we need to do, oh, we need one, sorry. So this is going to be reaction 746. So remember, this number needs to be unique. And it's going to be. Alice plus OH goes to Bob plus the secondary organic compound. Now, SecOrg, we need to be careful of capitalizations. SecOrg is actually has lowercase within it. Uh, we don't have a CO2 being formed at the end. And we need to uh, uh, so we're going to need to do this again. Alice and Bob are in uh, Christstrat. So we're going to put them into both. Um, Uh, we also need to edit this config defs mod to increase uh, NR therm. So let's just have a look at the reaction we're being asked to add in because we need the rates. Um, so the rates are defined there. Um, uh, 
and actually what we do need to do is we do need to add in both because of course we've added in Alice and Bob to both and it says uh, and it, it's an optional second organic compound so we, we need both types of reactions to be included um, and we do this at using version 131. We're going to get a little hint. So we've got SecOrg there. We need to have this A qualifier and the A disqualifier. We need to make sure we increase our biomole master and then our therm accordingly. So if we go back to our thing, we've got K naught, uh, our alpha and beta terms. So we'll do the first reaction with SecOrg first, and then we'll put in the reaction. Uh, We'll do it again without it. So make sure we've got Christrat. Uh, this needs to be a chemistry scheme 131. Um, so let's add in these rates. So it's 2.7 E minus 11. Uh, the alpha term is zero and the beta term is minus 390. So that's our first reaction. And this is uh, when we have aerosol chemistry on. So that's the qualifier section. That's defined in more detail. Uh, if we come and look at our bimolecular reactions, we have this qualifier and disqualifier. So what the, the qualifier and disqualifier were also defined in the uh, for the for the species, um, which we can see in the adding new traces tutorial. Um, so what these are. So if we have it as a qualifier, it's turned on when that's on. If it's a disqualifier, it's turned off. Uh, when that's off. So we want A with these aerosol chemistry additions. Um, so if we come back, we've put an A here. So now we need to do this reaction again, but we need to do this reaction without SECOR. So we need to uh, copy this. And we put a comma in. So it's still 746, it's the same reaction, but what we need to do is remove SecOrg. It's still strat trot plus Christ strat, but now what we do is have the A disqualify. It's the same rate of reaction that we're including. So we've added two new bimolecular reactions. So what we need to do is go right back up to the top and increase the number of bimolecular reactions in the list. Now we've only added one new bimolecular reaction, but we've added it twice, once for with aerosol chemistry and once for without aerosol chemistry. So we want to go down to uh, N bimol master, and this is now uh, 1211. So the other routine we need to edit is, oh, save this before we go, is config defs mod. Now then we need to edit these this NR therm step. Uh, in our therm sections. So uh, this is where we come back to the same places as we had before. So we've increased uh, here um, and we haven't, we're not running with trop het. So uh, what we need to do uh, is increase that to be uh, Six four seven. That's with aerosol, um, uh, but we also increase it with trop hat because we might turn that on as a separate uh, option. Uh, similarly, uh, here we've got our NR therm. We need to increase to sixty six if we're running without aerosol chemistry. And then if we come back up to our strat trop section, so strat trop is here. We've got our NR therm. Again, we've got a trop het section. So we're changing this to 240 and this to 242. And if we go back up here, we've got our NR therm here, which is 220. We change that to 221. 
So let's just check our hints. Have we done all our hints? Uh, we've done our SecOrg, got the A and the A qualifier disqualifier, incremented N by more master with a number of reaction lines, which is two. We've incremented N our therm by the number of reactions, which is only one. If we go back to our code, um, so we've got Alice there, Alice here, 746, 746. So, so the first one is with aerosol chemistry. And this is without aerosol chemistry. Um, all at uh, one three one, and for strat drop and cross strat with our rates of reaction. So we save that. Um, config defs mod is saved. Let's give this another try. See if that works. Again, because we're making code changes, it may not work, and that's normal. And to a certain extent, uh, I'm always a little bit suspicious if everything runs first time. So if it does work, we can look at this Python notebook, uh, and that will allow us to look at these reactions. So that's running. Is it going to be successful? Looks like it's been successful. So uh let's look here so we need to change our suite at cw933 and let's run this so this is designed to plot specifically plot alice and bob and the reaction between alice and bob and so now we can see alice and bob are in fact changing um but uh Alice is being converted to Bob as we would expect. And if we look at our reaction, we can see uh, that, that is that is actually occurring and that reaction is appearing, um, which is great. So we're getting this here. Um, now what we can do is change the initial concentrations of Alice. So this will now allow something to actually happen. Um, so what we need to do now is edit uh, the initial concentration array that we have. So we need to set it to one times ten to the minus nine, um, and we can do that. So we can just double check what um, file we're using with this chem tracer parsed equal dropper pause, and that is actually held inside our suite here. So what we want to do is film trace pars st glow map uh, arrow equatorial dropper pause. That's fine. So we scroll down. Um, let's put it. It's a chemical tracer, so we'll put it before the aerosol ones come in. And we want. Um, Have it the same number of decimal places and uh, definition to Alice. So that's defined that now. So let's try rerunning this again. We've got the concentrations defined, so that should be picked up. Um, yeah, so need to edit tracer and file name and make a copy. Uh, and initialize it. We'll just we've just edited it in place here. So that's run successfully, but did we do it properly? Has it picked up our concentration change? And yes, it has. There we see Alice and Bob are changing. Um, so that's fantastic. And now we can try running this with Christrat and see if it does anything with Christrat because it should work with Christrat. We should get slightly different concentrations. Um, and we're doing it with Christrat uh, without Glowmark mode aerosols included. So what we'll do is turn off uh, everything again. 
So science settings, we want uh, Christrat, turning off those, and in Hetchem, turn off those. Let's give this another go. So we're just we're just running it with different different configurations, different settings, just to make sure that uh, the code changes we've made are robust to changes to other things, which is generally good practice to do. Okay, so that's finished. We can go back to our uh, Jupyter notebook and we can rerun everything. And there's Alice and Bob. as we would expect. Um, and again, as it says, we can have a look um, and at the notebook and we can see, because we've taken SecOrg out, it's notebook has magically worked out that it's not got um, SecOrg in it. So it's not included it as a product of the reaction. So that's fantastic. So We've now successfully added in our chemical reaction and we've tested it. We've increased our NR therm. We've added in, we, we don't need to add in any special code, um, but we've initialized our tracer for, for, for Alice at least. And we've tested it with different chemistry schemes. Now we can start on tutorial five. So what we're gonna do in this tutorial is we're gonna start using the unified model itself. So this is in a completely different suite. Uh, we were running uh, a box model suite. Now we're going to be running a UM suite, which is more complicated, and we need to be running uh, CQ986 uh, or a copy of that. So we don't need our box model suite anymore. So I'll shut that. Um, and what we need to do is the same we did before Rosie, copy CQ986. And again, you can edit the, the title if you need to, but I'm not going to. Um, and we'll make a copy. And so we've got CW938. So if we CD to roses, CW938, we can rose edit. Um, and we can open it up. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna run it before we do anything else. Um, it will take longer to compile. Uh, there's a lot, there's many more files to compile. It's around a million lines of code when you include uh, UKCA in there. There's also Jules and the land surface, you know, land surface scheme has to be built. It's going to take a while. Um, so we'll let that, we'll let that run. Um, we can notice that as well as doing FCM make, it also has an additional step, which is called recon before it runs Atmos. So Atmos is the unified model running itself. Um, what the recon step is for is to create the initial condition file for the unified model. So this is equivalent to me editing that, uh, that tracer, uh, list of tracer values, but it's much more complicated for the UM because we've got 3D fields for these that we have to insert. Maybe we've got a, a file containing the concentrations or the, the, the values through a field. Um, we could also set things to just constant numbers again, and that's that's done in the in in one of the panels. Um, but that's quite a complicated step. What it also does, interestingly, is it de determines the resolution for the UM. So the resolution of the the app, the kind of the the, the file that comes out of the recon determines the resolution of the UM that that gets run. Um, although you need to make sure the input files match that resolution. So that, as I say, that's going to take maybe ten minutes to to run uh, potentially. Um, before we're ready, and then later compiles will be faster again, as we saw with the box model. Um, the directory structure of the UM is different and slightly more complicated. Um, so uh, we can take a look at that in a little bit. Uh, if we go to our silk run directory, Uh, we can see this U CW938 is existing. Now we won't have all the things there because it's in the middle of building. We can go into the work directory and we can see this FCM make is going on. So FCM make is, is the thing that's going on with it. Um, the build process is actually done 
in the share directory. So if we go into FCM make in there, we can see this FCM make dot log. And in fact, if we tail minus F this FCM make dot log file, we can see it compiling. Uh, so that's that's progressing as it compiles all the code. Um, the structure isn't it, it kind of makes sense in a way that you saw earlier on i was looking at kind of the error files and the output files within uh within the silk window these pointer files in this directory structure so kind of the suite knows where these directory files are held and it will be able to go and find that the files to be able to be able to view them um so we can see We've got we might have this log here so if we cd into job and the fcm make we've got this zero and nn so nn is always the most recent file and we can see what's going on here so we can do i don't know if this job.out file is is running but that might that will be kind of appended as things go on potentially um we also have the the error file that's appearing nothing in the error file yet and if we go to the fcm make here we can again equally go to the job.out file um, and it will show us the same file but in this uh through this kind of silk viewer that we have um when the job actually does run, uh, that work directory like we had with UKCA, that work uh, one UKCA will now be work one Atmos. And that's where our output files are going to exist for this particular suite. What you might find is if you're running it on a big HPC, those files are put somewhere else and may eventually be archived to tape or to another file system somewhere else for longer term storage uh, automatically. But for these simple jobs, it just saves them in this work in the work directory. Um, so while this is building, we can take a click around uh, the UM and take a look at what's going on. Um, so we've got our FCM make, like we had with UKCA. We've got our sources uh, here. So currently, we're not running with any sources. It's running completely from the trunk. This is our UM sources. And then our UKCA sources are at the bottom. Throughout this tutorials, we're actually going to add in a branch, a UKCA branch, so the one we've been building in the box model, but we'll also need to make changes to the UM, and that will be added into the UM sources here. Um, if we click into the UM itself, we can go onto the, the nameless section, and this kind of defines all the settings we have. Um, if we go to the IO system settings, um, we can see what are called stash requests. So stash is the, 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 the way the UM outputs fields. Um, we've not got that many output in here. Uh, for a UM job that's run on a cluster, you'll have much more output uh, that's been used, but this is a relatively small subset. And we can see that all of these are going to this UPA stream, which is we'll see later on when its output is, is a file that has a .pa uh, file extension. Um, we're outputting various things. We're outputting ozone to various mode, uh, a consoluble mode, age of air. Uh, we're adding in NO2. We've got some budget terms that are being added. Um, we've got some output on pressure levels as well as output on model levels. So we can see this D all theta here means we're outputting on all theta levels. We've got a three hourly mean to this UPA stream. Diag. Uh, this is a surface emission. Diag would just mean that we're running a surface. So rather than all, all theta levels, we've just got a single a single level. Um, and this DP27 CCM, so we're running a 27 level pressure output on these uh, on these ones here. So various different uh, UKSA output is being uh, is being uh, added in. Um, this bit up here, this going to UPUKCA, this is how UKCA couples to the UM. Um, it's not something we need to worry about here, but if you were adding in kind of new uh, 
driving fields into the into the UKCA from the UM, so a new quantity that the UM calculates the UKCA needs for whatever you're adding in for your work, you would need to pass it through this UP UKCA stream and add code to the UKCA interface to allow it to read it in. Um, so this is still uh, this is still running, uh, still doing the compile step. So it's been doing it for about seven minutes. Um, we can go back to the Uh, we can go back and view the fcmmake.log file and still see that it's still checking away compiling. There we go. Um, if we go back to the UM uh, row settings, so just like we had in the UKSA box model, uh, we've got um, uh, UKCA settings. So this is under UKCA is in what's called section 34. And these basically mirror what the, the, the values were in the box model. So we've got our chemistry scheme and we've got extra bits because we're we're now dealing with advection. So we can, you know, how we reset the age of air, how we're doing the, the uh, conservation scheme in the model, that sort of thing. Uh, if we look at the chemistry, we've got, um, again, the chemistry panel, uh, we can see we've got the same settings, similar settings, but we've now got other values like how we overwrite the top boundary condition of the model. Um, you know, if we go, we've got the heterogeneous chemistry, but now we're reading in these background aerosol files. Uh, again, with the photolysis, we've now got uh, how we set photolysis up. We use the fast AX scheme, uh, as well as a lookup table above a particular cutoff, which is 20 pascals. Um, these are where the FASTJX input files are held. Um, if we go to the emissions, we've got a, a whole list of uh, emissions files that are here, various emissions options that we have for GLOMAP. Uh, we look at feedbacks, we can see, uh, you know, we've got uh, RAD Air on, which is, allows the aerosols and the radiation scheme, um, but we're also uh, having methane in the radiation scheme, N2O and ozone and radiation scheme. So we've got a fully interactive model that's going on here. And then our glow map settings that we that we had there. Let's just see how the job is progressing. So it's still building. Um, so it's now compiling some Joules code. So Joules is the land surface scheme. And in fact, later versions of UKCA were able to run our dry deposition scheme from within Joules. Um, so again, this is uh, see what's going on. So come back here. One thing that is useful is a search option. So we can search for L this AL UKCA. Um, let's say L UKCA. Uh, let's find a let's try an I UKCA, see if there's any I UKCAs anywhere. So we search for I UKCA, we can see uh, our UKCA conserve method is, a, is an integer value we've got. And we've got another one here, our UKCA chem version. So we can use the search that will allow us to find uh, various quantities that are going on. It opens up these extra tabs and we can, we can see what's going on, which is really useful if you need to find a particular variable and you don't know where it is in the structure, you can use search to find it rather than, than having to roost around. Um, other thing that's useful is metadata and help text. So, you know, if I go to I uh, mode setup here, it gives me all the information that I've got. It has a current value of two. Um, it, we have a description, you know, set aerosol, which appears here, set aerosol species and modes, um, tells us where that goes and it gives a full help text. So aerosol mode configuration is currently available for UM four, one, two, six, and eight, and 10 of the scribe. So, you know, you've got all these options here that are, are there um, and they all will have help text. If you add in a new variable that's UKCA through the name list, you'll need to define equivalent help text as well. Um, what you also find in the stash requests um, is that when you add, want to add something new, so you want to add a new UKCA variable, for instance, um, uh, 
then you can you can also see things in here. You can search and filter and various other things. So the 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 rows panel is really helpful when it comes to uh, comes to adding things in. And in fact, you can add when you add a new stash master uh, variable that appears here. What it also will do is you, you can you add in metadata for it that is like here. So this adds this description. You can hover over, and it will tell you what's going on, and it will also tell you kind of how many requests and things like that you have. Um, so have we finished? We've been going for about twelve minutes. So it's still compiling. Um, as I say, it will be slow the first compile, and then subsequent compiles after that will be a lot faster. Um, uh, we now so this is now we can see we're compiling Azad. So Azad is the um, chemical solver package within UKCA. Um, so that's that's good. So hopefully we're getting near the end of compiling the UN. Um, once once the um, once the out once the, the the output is there, we can take a look at how we view it. Take a look at the output files, and you can see what those uh, what those look like. And you'll see how as we go through how they how things get added to them. So I'll close this extra stash requests window because we don't need that for the moment. But we will later on, and later UKCA tutorials, we will be adding in new stash requests, and you'll see see uh, this window again um, there are other settings here what i would say is when you pick up a job to run on whichever platform you're running on um, be careful about changing things you might you know if you're changing something in ukca then obviously you need to change say an emissions file or the chemistry scheme but i wouldn't necessarily go away and start changing things like the resolution um, or the time steps or anything like that if if you're not sure what's going on similarly changing the output that comes out um, I generally I avoid uh, making too many drastic changes to output unless I know that that's what I need to do um, generally the files will be quite big when they come out but um, you know they are you know you'll be archiving them somewhere um, and so I, it's often better to have more output in that you than you, you definitely think you need because you might end up using that output um, for later on. Say you're writing a paper, you, you're one of the reviewers asks, you know, what's going on with this other quantity you hadn't thought about. Um, you know, it, likelihood is is that most things will be in the output somewhere, so you you can you can keep them there. Um, okay, so we're still compiling. Um, Hopefully it won't be too much longer, uh, and then we can we can see what the UM how the UM runs. It will take a few minutes to run as well um, because it's not as quick as as running with UKCA. Um, the model is set up to run six dynamical time steps, um, and uh, which is three of thirty minutes length of thirty minutes each, with uh, a chemical time step of one hour as we had in the box model. So um uh, those are again those are set using similarly named variables we had in the box model uh, uh elsewhere so i think if we go to the top level here we can see steps appear in im uh it's numbers of uh numbers of seconds in day and we've got 48 steps for period im so 30 minute time step but we've still got a chemical time step of uh, one hour, which we can see here. So code is still compiling. Um, so it's now compiling the reconfiguration. 
So that looks like it's finished. So, and in fact it has, it's finished successfully. The recon is running. Recon should be very quick. And then the atmosphere will run when the recons uh, run. So, in fact, if you do a top, you can see this umrecon.exe is running. Again, it shouldn't take too long to run the reconfiguration, maybe a, a minute or so to create the, uh, the initial files. And then once the recon is finished, it will run the atmosphere step, assuming the recon completes successfully, which it shouldn't have a problem in the this one because it's running directly from the trunk. So if we go to work, uh, recon, we can Okay, so in fact, the reconfiguration has finished. There we go, it's finished. So what we can do now is go to Atmos and we can view the, well, before we do that, uh, this is our work directory. Let's go back to the recon directory. And what we can have a look at is this A start file. Um, so there are two different ways to view the A start file. So the A start file is the initial condition file that's read by the UM. So we can use xconv uh, to run it, to look at it. Uh, so it's called atmos.a start. And we can see this. So this is, these are all the variables the uni unified model needs to have knowledge of before it's able to run. Um, you can see all the UKCA traces there, as well as loads of other quantities, U, V, uh, surface pressure, I think, uh, is in there, surface temperature. Um, and it will also have initial condition value. So something like ozone, we need a condition, initial condition value for. And we can plot this and we can see. So, I mean, you, you can make out, you know, here's South America, here's Europe, uh, et cetera. So we can, we can plot those. Uh, we can also do an X, uh, We can plot. Uh, so this is a, a latitude uh, height plot. We haven't done any zonal meaning. But we can see, you know, this is ozone. We've got our ozone maximum here um, and lower values in the troposphere. But this is a very low resolution model. It's what's called an N48 L38 model. So it has, um, it's about half or a quarter of the resolution in the horizontal than you might have in the UK, current UK Earth system model, UK SM1.1. Uh, um, and it has a lower top at just a, under 40 kilometers compared to the Earth system model would run at 80 up to 85 kilometers. Um, so, but it's designed to be a quick job to run for testing and development rather than any particular science. And I wouldn't, I'd say you shouldn't really use this particular configuration for science purposes, but it's really good for development and, and testing. So this is running what we can do. Uh, we can also use uh, CF view uh, to view the a start file um, and that will uh, might take a little might take a second or so when it boots up and that's an alternative way of viewing uh, um files which is python based using cf python as a back end uh, rather than the the older XCOMV. Um, so it can make some nicer plots. Um, and, oh, no, that didn't work. Let's just try CFU on its own. So,
oh, it doesn't like uh, CFU can't view the A start file. So we'll 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 use we'll look at CFU when we get the the job uh, running. So but what we can do is view as this is running. We can see how uh, how the job is getting on. So we're actually looking here. This is kind of telling us number of iterations in the UKCA chemical solver. Um, so it's it's ticking on. So this is the end of time step three, or the start of time step three rather. So it's run one UKCA time step already. It's got two more UKCA time steps to go, and then it will have completed the UKCA uh, step. So you can just let that carry on in the background. Um, while that's running, what we can do is just start to take a look at tutorial six. So what we need to do in tutorial six is um, we're going to be uh, adding some new diagnostics in to the model. So we're going to get to start to learn about how to use Stash in the model. Um, and Stash is quite complicated. Uh, it can be, it can do quite a lot of, of stuff, um, but it does do quite a lot of things. We're using it in a rather simple way in the tutorial, but you can do quite a lot of things with it. Um, Stash output goes through these different streams as I highlighted. We're going through the UPA stream, and you'll see what that means uh, when the job has finished running. Uh, we've seen the stash panel already for the stash requests and adding in new requests. Um, and I talked about the deal theta diag and uh, the pressure level outputs. Um, you've got different ways of outputting. You can output all time steps, say you can output means, you can output fields instantaneously, but say every hour, you know, output into UPA, you, or any other PA stream or the UP mean stream. Uh, if you're running the US system model, you won't have a UP mean, but you might just write to UPM and then climate meaning is done afterwards. In the UKCA, we have six stash sections, um, 34, which contains our prognostic variables. Uh, 37 is lateral boundary conditions. You only use this if you're using a limited area model uh, like it's used for the air quality forecast. Um, section 38 is government mode diagnostics. Um, section 50 is chemical diagnostics on the same grid as the prognostic variables. And the section 51 is a copy of section 34, but on pressure levels. Uh, and we must output the heavy side function um, if we do that. And then section 52 is the same as section 50, but on pressure levels again. So we've got pressure level equivalents for all the chemical uh, output and the uh, diagnostic output. So the next task we, we're asked to run is output three hourly mean carbon monoxide to the UPA stream. So we'll make that edit now while the job is running, and then uh, we can, uh, when when this is finished, we can rerun it again just after taking a quick look at the output. So uh, what we want to do is go to our stash requests. And the easiest way, there's two, there's two different ways you can output it. You can, uh, and I'll show you both, I'll show you both methods. So the first way would be to, uh, to add a new stash request here. We would go through to UKCA, click the little arrow, we find CO, and it's not got any requests at the moment. So we clicked on it and we click add. And I'll just close that window. So here's CO here. So we've got section 34, item 10, which is what we want. We don't have a domain name. We're going to, it's all theta because it's section 34. Uh, it explicitly asks for um, three, three out means, and we want it to UPA. Now we don't have to give it a package. I'm not going to give it a package at this at this time. So that's technically all we need to do to add CO. Um, it also asks for the equivalent diagnostic on pressure levels using the DPCCM. So what you can also do, and this might be easier to do uh, for a lot of things than 
adding it the way I've just done, is we can clone, we can duplicate an existing uh, section. And instead, we can change this. So we put that to zero. If we get rid of the UKCA testing uh, to make it match with the other one. So if I save this uh, and close, we can now got CO on pressure levels and we have ozone on pressure levels. Now, if we look here, we've got this index. And these are the format kind of, you know, stash code, section 34 item one with a hash at the end. And we, our new ones just have one and two. And what we need to do before uh, we run, and we don't have, we can run without doing this, but it's better to uh, run what's called the tidy stash transform uh, macro. And what that does is create these hash numbers for us. So we have our hash numbers there. So let's just see if our job is finished. It's still running the atmosphere step. Um, we're at the end of time step six. So this will will end pretty soon. This is a kind of, we're just starting in UKCA. Um, in fact, that's finished now. So that's great. So that's perfect. So what we can do, we'll just take a quick look at the Atmos file. So we've now got this PA file, Atmos A.PA. We can open it in XConf. And you see you've got a far lower uh, number of things that we had before. So here's, uh, here's our ozone. This is the three hour mean of ozone. It looks basically like the initial condition, but we could look at the time. We could see that it's actually valid at 1.30. In the morning, that's because it's a mean between midnight and 3 a.m. And if we use CFU, we can see if you should work now because it can it can cope with uh, PA files rather than uh, um, uh, uh, the um, A start file. So we can plot this. What's nice about CFU is it will give a map plot, so you can kind of see where things are. Um, which is quite nice. You can play around with the, the color scale and everything else. So that's run now. What we've, we've added in our new stash request. So what we're going to do, we've saved our thing. We're going to click run. So what this will do now is uh, rerun our suite. But now it will run it with uh, the, uh, the new CO stash request added in. Now this again, hopefully we should take 17 minutes to compile this time. Um, it might only take a minute or so to compile, um, but it will take uh, uh, about the same amount of time for the reconfiguration and it will take this about the same amount of time for the atmosphere step to run. And that's the same through all the rest of this, uh, uh, the rest of this uh, tutorial is, um, it will take about the same time for each. I mean, nothing much we can do about that, really. Um, when you run on a HPC, it will be, could be quicker because we've got more processes to run on, but this, uh, this job is set up to run um, in a, on a two, two processes. So it's, it's running rather quickly. However, as you can see there, an FCM make took 51 seconds, which is great rather than 17 minutes. And a recon again, probably about a minute and a half uh, as it did last time, in fact, even better, 15 seconds. And now the atmosphere step is running again. So what we can do uh... So while that's uh, started and running, what we can do is take a look at uh, tutorial seven. We'll pick this back up again when that's finished. So tutorial seven is where we start getting into uh, the nitty gritty of working with our new branch. So um, we've got Alice and Bob, we've got a reaction between them that's happening in UKCA, but now we, what we wanna do is use this in the UM. You know, we, uh, we wanna be able to get it so UKCA understands this. And so what we need to do is get the UM to understand that Alice and Bob exist and they exist as tracers that need to be uh, included and moved around. Um, that's relatively straightforward. We kind of copy what's done for existing traces um, 
and uh, we're actually told in our task we've got to use slots 498 and 499 for the tra strat drop and cry strat 2 schemes this will slot in uh, 498 for Alice and 499 for Bob. We initialize them to 1 times 10 to the minus 15 and output the two traces as well as quest pressure level equivalents to UPA. So basically, add them in as traces, put everything in, initialize them to, to some value. So what we need to do now is make a, a UM branch. So to make a UM branch, um, we need to uh, make a branch under the, uh, the UM track pages. So we've made a branch under UKCA. What we want to do now is make a branch under the unified model. Uh, so UKCA tutorial changes. And this is an enhancement. We're going to have milestone. Uh, I will keep it as not for builds and uh, it's useful to put UK, UKCA as a keyword. And so we create the ticket. And as we did with the UKCA, when we're going to start work. So now we've got our new ticket 7251. And that's what we're going to use to make our branch. Um, so we exactly the same way before, but now we have rather than UKCA, we have UM, and rather than UM, we have VN for version. Um, and so we're going to make our we're going to make our branch. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'll make a new tab because we want to have both branches open. So uh, So let's call. So this one we called um, tutorial work. This one we'll call UKCA tutorial work. Again, we don't need to put uh, a version number or anything. And we need the ticket number. And the ticket number was 7251. Um, and it will be exactly the same. We're going to have a little uh, message pop up saying, please, can you uh, put in a message? So, you know, so, um, and what we'll do is say we quit and do that. So before I carry on, what I'm going to do we know that this branch works. I'm going to commit this. So FCM commit. Um, this is our UKCA branch. So I'm going to commit my UKCA branch. Uh, so we know we've got a working Alice and Bob with the reaction. So we come back to our UM side branch. And what we want to do now is pop, uh, check this out. And so there's lots more files, so we get lots more stuff checked out. Just have a look. We're on time step four for the UM running, which is great. Um, so uh, we come back to our UM branch and we see the into VN 13.0 UKCA tutorial work, which is our new branch. Um, and what we're going to need to do now is edit our UM suite to point to the metadata of this new branch because our stash master changes count as metadata and they need to be read by the rows to be able to see them, to be able to add them in. Um, so 
uh, what we need to do for this. So we're just going to uh, get to the correct path. We need to be rows meta uran loss head. So we see the rows meta uran at loss head. I want to take a copy of this. And if we come to our uh, URN here, get rid of that, and click apply, that will have read in our metadata. What I'm going to do is just change the Ubuntu to Vagrant. The Vagrant will work on any system, not just uh, whereas Ubuntu only works on an AWS system. But it points to the same place. So let's just see that's finished. Still running. So we've used our metadata in rows and we want to include for our code changes. Um, so let's just see what we're getting on with. So we're on time step six, so it's nearly finished, so that's good. So what we'll do here so what we need. Is the path to that branch again. So we'll just come out of the uh, that directory. Just need that. So, and what we also need is the UKCA branch to be added in as well. Uh, but we're not going to add in our UKCA branch at this time, just the UN branch. We'll add the UKCA one later. Um, so, has this job finished? It's nearly there. It's on the last time step. So what we'll do, we need to edit our stash master. So we want to edit the stash master A file to add in our new traces. Now the stash master A is very complicated. Um, in fact, that job has now finished. So what we can do just before we edit the stash masters, we can just um, take a look at our CO output. So. So we add it our job now. Now we can see CO has appeared, got a pressure level version. So we don't have anything very close to the surface because of the uh, orography, but we can find our CO at the time step. There we go. Perfect. Um, so that's great. We added our, able to add our new output. What we can do now is then work on uh, work on our stash master file. So what we want to do uh, is edit this stash master A file. So come back to our branch.
and this is a rather so this is a rather complicated file. It has every single thing you can output from the UM in it, absolutely everything. And what we need to do is add on in to section 34, 498, and 499. Um, the bits that we need to worry about from UKCA perspective are the section number, the item number, the name of the species. Now, these are option codes. These tell you whether you're being turned on or off a particular scheme. And then this uh, PP field code. Now, PP field code should be set to zero now. They, the existing field codes are fine, but new PP field codes should be uh, should be set to uh, should be set to uh, zero. And we've got this space code here, which is whether it's held in the dump or not. Prognostics is two, which means they're stored in the dump. Diagnostics, which are passed to output files uh, only, they should be zero. Um, these option codes, you count from the right. So you carry on there. Uh, and we might have an age of air, we've got the standard traps, traps, traps right chemistry, rat chemistry. The ones we're interested in, of the structural chemistry, so number five, so one, two, three, four, five, so that that one there, and Chrystrat two, which is what we're using here, it's the eleventh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, so that one there, that's what we're interested in for our species. So what we want to do is add in Alice and Bob uh, with these settings. So what we do, let's uh, go down. So we got our, the last one is this 260. So take a copy. So now we know we're in 498. Now, the, the thing to remember here is that this again, this is fixed width. We need to make sure everything fixes up. Um, it goes up to the same length. So do Alice. And so we, that, that pipe has to be directly in line with that pipe there. All these other settings here, 40, 11, et cetera, are fine. Space code of two is fine. What we need to do now is make sure we've got our option codes correct. So two, three, four, five. So that one there needs to be a one, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So that's a one already. So the, the one we've copied already is in Chrysler two. That's already a zero, so that's fine. Um, and then what we want to do is copy this again and make this 499 and make this Bob. So that's what we need to do uh, for our section 34. We need to do exactly the same thing in our section 51 to make a pressure level version. So uh, I'm going to go all the way down to section 51, which would take quite a long time. Let's see if I can speed it up a little bit. That's our section 38, 50 chart we'll be dealing with later. I think we've gone a bit too far. 51, right, here we go. So we need to go up. And find we find exactly the same one that we copied before. Um, And we want this to be four nine eight and again we want to match this up and two three four. That a one. Exactly. 
let's say Bob. Bob. Um, oh, no, that's lowercase. Um, so we've got our value there. Notice the space code here is zero rather than two. Um, what we also need to think about is the help text. So as I pointed out, we've got this help text. We need to edit this meta so we get the help text. So again, we want to scroll down until we can find, uh, just can copy an existing one. It doesn't, this is easier. It's less the advanced things to worry about. So Add that in. Eight. That so we've got Alice and Bob as the help text, so that's all fine. Um, let's see uh, what we need to do next. So what we need to do now is make sure we FCM commit the changes. So let's just have a look at what the changes are. So we're only an SCM diff minus G. Okay, we've got added in 2498, 2499. Ah, we've missed something here. So we need to add in the pressure level provisions as well, um, which we can do in a second. So this is what we're adding in here. Uh, um, these are our standard level sections uh, that we've we've got um, and what we want to do now is you can sit you can see the pressure level sections five one uh, uh, section 51 498 499 and uh, so that's fine right what we need to do is edit the pressure level section so Go down to section 51. Again, copy an existing one. So There we go. And if we do an FCM diff this time, so there's our 498, section 34, 499, and then there's our fifth section 51 equivalent. Uh, and then if we, oh, yes, we've added these in. Um, and 
C, uh, section 34, 498, 499 that are there. Um, so what we do need to do is FCM commit these. So FCM commit. And what was our ticket number? 7251. So quit and commit that. Right. So uh, now what we need to do is use this stash master file in rows. Now this is a bit complicated. We need to make sure it's being done correctly. So first of all, we need to make sure the UIP point, the metadata points to the branch if it isn't already. So we should have already done this. So if we go here, yep, we're pointing to the metadata of the branch. So that's fine. Now this is what's necessary for rows to be able to see it, but it won't allow the UM to see it when it runs. And so this is why we need to do these extra steps. So what we want to do now is close our suite. So if we leave our suite open and make these changes to the files, it will forget them. So we've closed our suite, come to the suite here. What we want to do is edit the app umrosapp.conf and add the line stash master equals stash master inside the end block near the top of the file. So what we do is So here's this env block, it's in alphabetical order. So it's at the end of this line. Dash master equals dash master. And then we need to edit the row suite conf and add the following lines to the top. So what this does is tells it to take this stash master file from the repository. Now, if we wanted to, we could run we can just point to the file because we're on the virtual machine. We can see it as it runs. But generally speaking, when you run your job, you can't see the location of the branch when it runs on the HPC. So the best practice is to point to the repository location. So we want to, is it the uh, suite.com file? Um, and add that to the top of the file. So this is a rather simple one, so it goes right at the top. And what we want to do here is make sure that we're running with the correct branch name, which is UKCA tutorial work. and my Mozza's user ID, which is Luke Abraham. Okay, so if we do an FCM diff minus G, we can see what the settings are. So it's saying we've added in our branch there. So it will be being picking up any changes we make. Um, We've changed the, the meta line and we've added the stash master line. We've added, and this is adding in the CO output. That's fine. And we've added in the stash master file there. So that's fine. So I'm going to commit this now because then if something messes it up later, we'll be able to see. Um, so 7251. This is in the this is in the suite, so we're not pointing on ticket seven two five one in the suite. We want it in the UM. Right. So now what we need to do is add in, and we need to initialize our traces. So again, this is quite complicated, but what we need to do now is go to the uh, initialization panel so we can edit our suite again. And if 
config add source which lives type fields and what we want to do is go to add new section view this name list so what we want to do now is go down to UKCA and to go all the way to Alice and add in UKCA go all the way down to Bob uh, we haven't got an answer file name uh, and we want to set this to be a specified constant so we want this value here so we want the whole grid uh, we're not updating we want to initialize set to a specified constant value there. so we'll also set ignore answer grid check to be false so the files have that so if we go back to our one here so we're into the minus 15 and what we need to do now um, is we need to uh, uh, run the tidy stash transform macro like we did with the stash requests um, but we can't do that from there isn't a button like we had before so we need to go down here tidy stash transform and this will say oh we're changing the value so that item one is vanished but what we if we search by stash request uh, sort by stash requests we can go through and see oh look there we go it's got a value so that's great um so that's that we've initialized our fields so that means the reconfiguration should create them um and we need, I need to output our traces so we're going to go to the stash panel we've done this before um and we're going to add a stash request so we can do this using the clone method because it will likely be faster so we take our co we clone this section it goes to 498 And then we clone Alice, go to 499, and we do the same for the pressure level version. So <clears throat> And what we also need to do is run the tidy stash transform macro again. This will give us our hash codes. We click save. And so that should be what we need before we can run our job. So what I'm going to do now is click run. Now we haven't got any code changes, um, so it should hopefully be quick, but it might take about 10 minutes to run the suite before we can see what's happening. So the, the, the tricky thing is, will reconfiguration work? We can test what reconfiguration looks like. We can open that A start file when it's run. Um, and we can see, uh, will the UM run with it in? Now it should, shouldn't do anything, we've not told how Alice and Bob interface in UKCA. We've added the traces and they're going to sit around in the UM and run around in the model and be transported around, but there's no chemistry that's going to happen with them. So um, that should be uh, that should be relatively quick uh, to see if it's if it's worked or not, hopefully. So again, it's compiled rather quickly. Um, Hopefully reconfiguration is quick again. So recon has succeeded. So what we can do now is look at the 
recon file. And what we should see, if we scroll all the way down to the UKCA section, is Alice and Bob should exist in that list. So be near the end to all those ones. And in fact, we have stash code 498, stash code 499. Now, we don't have a name here because this version of ETCONV is reading from the, the UM names from the UM trunk rather than from the uh, the branch. We can change that if we want, um, but that's fine. We just we know it's three four four nine eight is Alice, and we can see that it's set to it's a constant everywhere ten to the minus fifteen, which is what we want. So now the UM should run, and it will be doing what we're doing particularly interesting because it's just um, running without any additions in, but it is running with these traces going around. So when we view the output in XCOM, what we might see is the numerical noise appearing because nothing's been happening. We're moving around. The advances will have changed slightly through the eviction scheme, but um, it's in a very, uh, very low concentrations. Let's just take a look forward and see what we're going to do now. So now what we need to do is add these traces into UKCA. Um, and this is where we're going to include our UKCA branch into the UM suite. So we're going to be making changes to the NM spec mod uh, to add this to, to add this in in our uh, UM branch, um, and that will allow it to then know that Alice and Bob exist um, and to look for them in UKCA. So let's make these changes uh, now while it's running. Um, so what we want to do is pick our as uh, was UK State NF spec mod. So this contains a, an array which matches up what a UKCA tracer name is with what our slot is in the stash master file. So our section 34 item one is ozone, our section 34 item 10 is CO, for instance, we looked at these already in the output file. And what we know is that we need to put these into 498 and 499. Now, what you can see is that we have 499 items. So we're putting these into the last two sections that we have. Um, and uh, so we can edit this file here, uh, again, to add in. Alice, and again, got to have a fixed length. So we add those in. Um, and that's all we need to do um, uh, for the for that changes. What we do need to do though is include our branch in the suite. Um, so if we come to the suite, we come to the sources. We've got our UM branch included, but we need to include our UKCA branch. So click the little plus. Need to get our branch name. So this is here. Uh, so so we've got that there. And if we go into our suite directory, we can just do an FCM diff and just check that our uh, branches have been included. So these are our output. We've added Alice and Bob to the output. Um, this is our initialization. We've added UM sources and 
UKCA sources existing. So that's great. So when the suite is run, we can uh, we can send that off again and see if we get something appearing between Alice and Bob. Uh, okay, we're on time step four. So we nearly nearly completed the run. So it's not too bad. Um, and now the advantage of, because we've already done the hard work in adding in the chemical reaction, when we run this, what we should, should start seeing is actually some structure appearing. Now, because it's a reaction with OH, um, it will be a, happening when there is, when we're in the day, because that's when OH will be around, so we can, we can see it then. So let's, uh, when this is finished, we can rerun the suite and take a look. So the run's just finished. Um, it should close up in a second here. And we can have a look at our output file. And we can see we've got 449, 349, 34498, which is Alice. And look, we can see this numerical noise that we're expecting. Uh, and it's in both of them. Uh, so, you know, so that's what we would expect. We've got these differences that are occurring and that's fine. Um, but what we can do now is because we've, we've included these branches in, we can rerun and we can see uh, how it works with these branches included. So, Let's go back here, rows, sweet run. So we've actually made a code change this time. So it will be having to do some work with compile uh, and it might need to do, you know, it's conceivably we might've had an error uh, with the compilation. So we'll need to just double check that that's passed correctly. Um, so I'd say it's been a little bit longer now uh, for the FCM make potentially. Reconfiguration should be doing exactly the same. Oh. So I had a little bit of a blip in silk. So the, the rows SGC command, the sweet G control, uh, graphical control will allow us to bring the silk back up again. So we've still got that compiling. Um, it's also having to build in the UKCA uh, branch, which again, will have a few code changes in. So we can take a look at the the fcmmake.log that we looked at previously, and we can see it's compiling up. So what it will do, because it, it not only compiles up the new code, it compiles up all the code that is affected by the new code and the knock-on effect. So it can take a little bit of time to read all these in. Um, Uh, 
So it takes a little bit extra here. Okay, so that completed uh, there. The reconfiguration is now running, and we'll again produce the Atmos uh, A start file like it did before. Um, so it took about three minutes for that, 20 seconds for that. So, what we can do now, now, now we might, you know, potentially might be having some issues, but let's go through. So we've actually had an error come through. So number of traces does not agree with JPCTR. So uh, if we look at the job error file, we can see number of traces not agree with JPCTR. So we've got obviously done something slightly incorrect somewhere uh, in setting this up. If we look at the job.out file, uh, that sometimes gives more of an information, more information, but sometimes not. Um, number of traces does not agree with JPCTR, so we've still got that bad issue there. Um, um, so let's try. Let's search for Alice. So we've got Alice and Bob. Right, so Alice hasn't turned up. Um, this has happened at the start of the UKCA time step. Um, so let's just take a look through and check what we needed to do. So we needed to include our, ah, we didn't change the iChem version, did we? So uh, that's what was going on. So we've turned Alice and Bob on. We think we've got Alice and Bob, but we've not actually turned them on in the code. Um, so what we can do here, we, we, set the, we set it for the box model, but we haven't set it for the UM model yet. So if we go to the UM science settings, section 34. Yep, still on 121. Put it on 31. And out we click run. So we've got to go through those steps again. It should be a bit quicker to compile because we've not made any code changes from last time.
So that again, very fast for compile. Reconfiguration again should take around 20, 15, 20 seconds or so. And let's just check and see. Uh, how this is going. So let's hopefully this should get through this time. So we're on time step two now, which is the UK first UK state chemical time step. Usually if there's a problem, we'll we'll pick it up now uh, or so. But if it starts saying number of iterations, um, then that should hopefully mean it's got through any of those setup issues. So these are reading a load of files, it's reading the FastJX files. Um, so it's setting up the photolysis. So that's that's going through okay now. So that run completed successfully, um, and we can view the output. So if everything has worked, rather than having uh, rather than having uh, numerical noise, we will start to see some structure. So we start to see some structure in Alice. So we're having some reduction Alice at where there's OH. And if we look at Bob, we can see kind of a mirror. Bob is appearing uh, from where Alice is disappearing, which is great. This is what we were expecting to see, what we were hoping to see. Um, so that's fantastic. This means this model is working. We've got our, our model working again. So what I'm going to do now um, is commit changes to the suite and to the branches just to make sure that we've got everything right. So we can see we've got some changed files. So I'm going to FCM commit these. Um, and uh, I think we've committed all our tutorial work, uh, the UKCA branch, yeah, but we have an uncommitted changes in the uh, UM branch. That's great. So we can move on to the next tutorial. So tutorial eight, it's also a rather tricky tutorial. And what we're doing in this tutorial is how to make new emissions files. So we could emit into our new traces. So 
in the box probably haven't got any emissions. We can have an initial concentration and see how uh, the concentration has developed. But in the UM, we can have emissions uh, over time, and that's what we're going to have here. So what we what we're going to do now is create a new NetCDF emissions file, and we're going to make a new emissions of Alice. And so this emissions file uh, already exists uh, on our system, so we can go and have a look. Uh, and so, so, so just check the task. Task point point eight point one, isn't it? Not five point one. And so we can see emissions of Alice. So this is the the raw data. Uh, and this is very high. This is a kind of half a degree by half a degree resolution. So you can see it's different resolution and it's much finer uh, that we have. And we can't use this in the model directly because it's uh, uh, because it's the wrong resolution, we need to run the N48 resolution that we're running in the model, which is uh, 96 by 72 grid points. Um, and what we need to do when we uh, make an emissions file is make sure we've got the right metadata for it. So as well as we're getting the resolution, we need to make sure we've got particular, uh, particular bits of metadata included, standard names, long names, the tracer that it's being emitted into, um, the units, uh, we might have scalings, um, we need to tell it what the calendar is and whether it's a, if it's a Gregorian calendar, whether we could, we could use, still use the data. So this generally for monthly means, uh, this should be one, but for daily means it would be, it would be zero. Um, and we might have global metadata, so the update frequency in hours, so how many hours before you update, it's usually about five days. You know, do we have a, a single time emission, a periodic time series or just a normal time series uh, for things. We're, again, we're going to use Python for this. You don't need to understand a lot about Python to create a tutorial. It will run it through for you. Um, and we've got this emissions.alice.nc. And in our notebooks, we've got two different ways of uh, uh, doing the regridding. So we can either use CF Python or we can use uh, Iris. So CF Python is uh, a uh, um, it's a way of reading in uh, UM files and converting them to CF compliant net CDF and being able to access the data and do some analysis that sort of thing. And Iris is similarly another way of doing things. They both basically do exactly the same thing in slightly different ways. Um, what these also do is plot uh, these things and they will create up uh, NetCDF files for us. We can try them both. They will both make NetCDF files. Um, we'll try the CF Python first. Um, so uh, what we'll do is we need to change the, the run ID to the run ID of the suite, which is um, CW938. Um, yep, CW938. So what we need to do here, CW938. So, so the reason why we need to put the suite in is because it needs to read in uh, an existing file so it knows what the resolution is that it needs to regrid to. Um, so it reads in, um, it does some regridding using a conservative uh, mass conserving approach and it will then plots this um, and it sets some so these are these metadata variables that we're adding in the trace name is alice um, the, the long name is alice surf emissions the vertical scaling is surface um, these are the units standard name it is a flexible one and we're setting an array of dates, so we've got it to uh, for uh, through the year zero, and it's writing it out to this emissalice.nc in a netcdf format. So we can take a look at this, and we can add a new new tab. So 
Fez are a Miss Alice. And you can see our Alice Surf emissions. There we are. Um, what I would say is, is the Iris and CF, because of the, the way they're doing the conservative uh, regridding, numerically it'll be slightly different. So the numbers will be slightly different from both of them. They like, won't be exactly the same, um, but they're essentially will be will be the same. So if we were to uh, uh, to be called uh, So we'll just rename this to be that one and we can run the iris script. So we've got, got both versions. So again, we need to CW938. Um, so generally what I found is that CF is faster to read the output files from the UM, um, but potentially it takes a bit longer for some of the numerical work to be done. Uh, inside it, whereas Alice might be slight, slightly faster at other bits. Essentially, they they both do exactly the same thing. Um, and so we've we've got our file now. So we can see they're slightly slightly different. So we could do uh, we've got our iris one there. Um, and So we can, if we plot them both, you can see that the numbers are slightly different in the third decimal place. CF has it as 3.375 3 times 10 to minus nine and Iris has 3.379 one times 10 to minus nine, but they're, they're basically very similar. Um, and we'll, I'll just rerun the CF one to get the, the name correct. Um, and we'll use the CF uh, version in our, in our suite. Um, so what we want to do, So we made up our file. We now need to make the required cho code changes to add the emissions into UKCA. Um, so what we need to do is use, uh, we, as part of this, we're going to make a diagnostic output. So we're going to use stash code uh, section 50 item 315 for this, and we'll output it to the UPA stream. Um, first thing we need to do is read in the file. And the easiest way to do that uh, is to um, is to uh, edit the rather than it can be a bit complicated to, to edit the line in the suite. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, um, we will edit the file itself. So we go vim app um roseapp.conf we want to search for UKCA M files. It's just the way that they're added in into the UM makes them uh, a bit harder to see. So what we want to do is go down to the end of this list. add in a new one, which is uh, so it's here. Actually, let's just make this bigger. So we've added that in. You can see 
do a diff. We've got those in there. So we've got a comma after the CO and we've added this in. So now if we rose edit the file again, again, it's better if, you, if you're editing the files that make up the suite manually, you should always close the graphical editor of the suite. Otherwise uh, you could overwrite them. So now if we go to the UKCA uh, settings, to the emissions, this is actually this line here. Go right to the end of the line, we can see it has appeared. So that's great. So we've got that added in. Um, we'll need to add in diagnostics at the stash panel. Um, and we'll need to commit changes to it. So um, what we want to do is uh, edit the stash master meta, um, which we can edit the stash master meta. Uh, for it, um, we'll add it that. We'll edit that later. We'll do the edits in sequence as it's suggested here. So the first thing we need to do is go to the UKCA branch and we make some changes to config defs mod. So this is where we've been before. Uh, right. So what well, we're only going to we'll only edit it for um, the strat trop for the moment. So what we need to do is edit the EM chem spec array. We have to put our new species, Alice, in this EM chem spec array, so emissions of chemical species, before the 3D fields. The 3D fields that we're emitting are SO2, NAT, BC biomass, OC biomass, and NO aircraft, if they're present. So we must make sure that Alice goes in advance of these. So it's straightforward for when we're not running with aerosol chemistry. So we would go Alice, and we need to make sure we've got 10 spots, NO aircraft, NCAM emissions is now 11. Um, it's a bit more complicated for this other one here because we've got this SO2 NAT here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in Alice. Just add that in here. Oh no, sorry, wrong place. Um, but what we need to do is just get rid of this line. So we've added that in there in place for strat drop. I'm not going to add it in for cry strat because um, we can't run cry strat in this suite, although you could go through and add it in for Christrat. Um, in fact, yeah, let's add it in for Christrat. So again, uh, we want to add in there. We need to increase the uh, NCO emissions. Um, is 27. And it's 35. So uh, we've got that added in there. Uh, so yeah, it does actually say add it in for Christ Strat. Um, UK say constants, we only need an M species um, value. So this is, needs to be consistent with C species. So the way so the way C species is calculated is C species equals M species divided by the molar mass of air, which is 28.97. So given that C species is one, 
our M species need to be 28.97 for both Alice and Vol. So what we can do is go down and put in our M species concentration values. So this should be 28.97. And so we've got those added in. So then we need to, in this get mole mass mod, we need to add in an equivalent line to get this mole mass. So, so again, we need to add in M Alice and M Bob to here. And go through uh, and So we've added those in there. Um, now we need to make sure uh, we've done that, added in constant changes. Now we need the code changes for the emissions diagnostic. So this can get a bit complicated, um, but we need to make sure that we're adding in uh, the various bits. So we need this UK say EM direct struct mod, which is in, uh, Control core diagnostics. So you can see we've got logicals, so we also want to add in And then we need to have pointers for them. A 2D, so you've got to be a 2D pointer. So we've got that one. Uh, we need to add into this update EM diag struct mod. So, so to set.
basically everywhere we've got other things. We need to put our Alice and Bob and Done that for Alice. And we do it for Bob. So We've got those added in, in that one. Uh, and we need to add in uh, the uh, UKCA at Miss Diag spot here. Uh, so it's in the same place. So so oh no, we don't need to do Bob at all, do we? That was my mistake. Uh we don't actually need a Bob, but we'll leave that in there. I'll take it out. So used to adding both Alice and Bob, we just need Alice for this. Um, And it's to go there. UK CMS control. So there is that. 
science core emissions. So Here, we need so that's our new emission section. So these are the changes in the UKCA code, but we actually need to match up our item number with our for Alice, and this is done in this get em direct stash in our UM branch. So what we need to do now is go to our UM branch, which is this one here. And we need the get em direct stash. And so this involves adding that there. So that then gets the correct uh, item. And the last thing we need to do is the stash master changes. So Uh, we need to go back up to section 50 for this. Now we can just copy an existing service submission. MEK is the last in the list, that's fine. So this is now five. Now, again, we need to make sure these match up. Now, we also need to make sure we've got these option codes correct. So that needs to be there. And that one's a zero. So we should have them in five and 11. So we go one, two, three, four, five is yes. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 is yes. And that's fine. And these other settings here, they will define that it's a surface field. Now, because it's a surface field, it doesn't have a pressure level equivalent, so we don't need to add one into section 52. Uh, but what we do need to do is add it into the metadata. Uh, so, add it in here. Service submission, service submissions of so that should do that. Now, what we do need to do again is FCM commit uh, because any stash master changes must be committed, otherwise, the job won't know what's going on when it runs. So, what we will do here, FCM, let's just do a diff just to see what the changes are. So, we've got that there, stash changes. Metadata, great. FCM. Um. So that's got that there. We don't need to commit the UKCA code changes just yet, uh, but what we do need to do, we close our suite and reopen it. That will then pick up the metadata changes uh, properly. We could reload the metadata, but we'll, we'll do that. And what we need to do now is add in our changes, uh, add in the new diagnostic. Because we've got our branch included, we've got our uh, correct uh, chemistry version now. What we do need to do 
is uh, output the output the suite in stash, uh, the diagnostic in stash. Uh, we've already got a surface emission there, so we can clone this. Uh, we've got our uh, NO surface emissions. So let's clone this and say five. And there we go, out of surface emissions. We do tiny stash transform and say, and so that should be everything that we need. Now there are code changes that are in here. Uh, it will compile. It may have an error with compile uh, because we've made quite a few complicated changes, so it may not may not like things, uh, but we will see. So let's. Uh, we've already we've already added in our emissions into the uh, emissions file into the job. So not FMC. So we can see a new emissions file, and we're outputting it here as a diagnostic. Still running FCM make. So again, it takes a few, a few more minutes when we're working with FCM Make. That seems to have completed. Yeah, it has, and there's a reconfiguration. The reconfiguration should be this exactly the same. We've not changed any initial conditions of any of the traces or made any changes to reconfiguration code. So that should run through fine. And then there's the atmosphere step. Um, so if we Now we could have errors occurring here, um, so uh, because something could have gone wrong that's passed through compile but uh, doesn't like uh, when it runs. So keep an eye. Once it gets, if it starts running the um, UKCA uh, number of iterations on the second time step, then that's usually a good indication that things are going to succeed. Uh, okay. Uh, although emissions are actually run every chemical, every dynamical time step. So if there's any problem with emissions, it should appear at time step one. And if but we can see the Alice emissions file has appeared. Um, 
and it has found it. So that's uh, that's positive. In fact, it's gone through that already, and we're starting time step two. Now it'll pick up the photolysis files and those other ones, and assuming those gets through all these bits and starts on the number of iterations, then we should be relatively confident that it should complete without an error, whether or not it's doing what we expect it to do is another matter. Just wait to see if it gets to the uh, starting the chemical solver. Yeah, so there we go. So we're now getting to the end of time step six. So this should complete soon. We can take a look at our output then. There we go. It's now finished. It should stop in the stock window in now. And there we go. So what we can do um, is I'll just close that. We can look at our output now uh, and see what we've got. So we want to find uh, uh, our Alice. So here we are. This is Alice. And if we plot it, so rather than being a blob like we had before, we've now got structure because we have uh, emissions going on in these places. And if we were to look at Bob, which is uh, that one again it will only appear in the daytime so we're starting at midnight so this is why it's over over uh, East Asia and we're now seeing bits of Bob so this is great this is working um, and uh, we can if we go to our uh, we've committed everything at our UN branch We've got lots of changes in the case everyone. So let's commit these changes now. Um, and we we'll commit our suite as well. So 
we're all starting from the same place. So that's fantastic. So we've got that working and we can now think about moving on to the next task, which is not as difficult as the uh, the, the previous two tasks. What we're now going to think about is dry deposition. So dry deposition um, of Alice. So uh, and what we've been told is this deposits in a similar way for carbon monoxide. And we've been given a value for the depth of death's master array. Um, there are two different dry deposition schemes that you can use. There's this simple 2D scheme and there's a more complicated um, 3D scheme. Um, we need to add them in for both, although actually the, the 2D scheme is not really used very frequently. Um, so, but we still need to have the, the, the value set. And again, it has the same scheme qualifiers, et cetera, that we have um, and, and, uh, and versions uh, that we would have for the, uh, for the other items in Chem Master. Uh, the interactive scheme, there's a couple of routines we need to work in there. Because we've been told it's the same for CO, it's actually relatively straightforward. We can just uh, replace certain items and replace, replace them with CO. Um, if it was more complicated, uh, we might have to define our own uh, settings. There are four different surface types considered, um, and we have to have a kind of entry for each, essentially. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Joules, the Joules land surface model, is is uh, later UN versions uh, able to run dry deposition, and so uh, eventually we'll be able to use the Joules dry deposition for 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 everything rather than having to work through the UKCA routines. So let's add these values in. Um, we need to work on uh, UKCA uh, Chem Master uh, and the two other routines there. So we need to get our uh, UKCA branch. Uh, okay, master. So the first thing we need to do um, is edit the uh, the tracer list and tell it we're going to be doing with dry depositing. So these ones and zeros, we put a one in that there. Uh, what we also need to do is with, with other things, we're going to have to increment length. Um, so we've got N dry master, we're going to have to do 162, because we've now got dry deposition included. And let's search for depth vel defs. So here we go, depth vel defs. Um, go down to the end, add it in after here. So I remember to put a comma at the end of that section. So this is now 162. So we'll change these values in a second because it's we know it's the same as CO. Um, and so we need to have this as strat drop, strat drop plus cry strat, and it's one, three, one. And then what we need to do is find the CO values and just duplicate those sections. And there it is. And uh, in fact, what we'll do is just align these. Right, 
So that's all put in for, for that one. Um, and we've um, now we need to see the interactive tri deposition scheme. <clears throat> so this is in uh, science called chemistry deposition for UKCA air rods. Where OD. Um, so So we need M Alice again for this. If we were depositing for Bob, we would need an M Bob. So we just copy one of these blocks. And change this here to be Alice. We don't need to make any other changes. Um, and the other one we need to edit is UKCA surf DDR. And we need to basically go through this routine and where every time we see a, a CO, we need to have, uh, we need to also include an Alice as well. So, um, um, except for this bit here, where we need to add in explicitly, um, So this is now longer than the maximum line length. So what we'll do is uh, yeah, so we need to So we've got that there. So any more COs? We've got CO Alice, CO Alice, CO Alice, CO Alice, CO and Alice. So that should be everything we need to make changes for here. Um, and that should be everything we need to do. So again, what we can do is we'll just rerun our job. So this should pick things up automatically because we've in our chem master have uh, have this one here. So it will just automatically dry deposit. Um, and we'll come on in a little bit later how we can actually output 
those deposition fluxes and just check that something is, you know, it's doing what we should be doing. So we'll set that to run. Need to just be careful of any crashes on compile. Um, we can have a look uh, as it's compiling and just check uh, see that we show if there's any errors. But again, there's quite a few changes been made to routines. Um, and so we'll have to compile those and all other routines that depend on those just in case there's something that knocks through. So it can take a little bit of time. So, you know, two or three minutes probably to, uh, to compile. building the reconfiguration. So built the UM fine. Just redoing the reconfiguration, which takes a few seconds. And then it should, that's finished. And now it's running recon. So now it's running the atmosphere. Again, we'll just check and see if there's anything that uh, turns up in the first couple of time steps. And if it starts running UKCA without a problem, then uh, we'll, we should be we should complete okay. One thing to notice here, um, you probably won't spot in the output. That you're that it's doing anything that it should be doing uh, because the numbers are going to be quite uh, that we're very we slightly different uh, until we get the the diagnostics out um, in a later tutorial we won't be able to see um, actually what's happening um, but what we can do um, is check uh, whether or not. Alice is kind of appearing in the list of things. So if we uh, view that and if we search for Alice, what we should see, uh, we've got the emissions files. That's great. So now we can see on our line for Alice here, we have this one occurring which means it is picked up that it's got dry deposition and there's the reaction and then here's the 2D values. So it's picked up those changes if nothing else. Um, uh, it doesn't seem to have crashed yet. So it's still running and it started another iteration. So this should be, this should progress through to the end and we can take a look uh, when that's finished. So that's completed successfully. Um, and we can just take a quick look at the uh, the output file. Although, as I said earlier, it's you won't be able to tell the difference really uh, due to the uh, due to the kind of small 
differences that will have come up. And what we'll do is when we've output the, the, the flux diagnostics, we'll output the flux diagnostic for dry deposition. And that means we'll be able to see uh, that come through more clearly. So uh, we've finished adding deposition. Let's go for dry deposition. Let's go and add in wet deposition. This is even easier than dry deposition. Um, we needed to add it in for Bob this time. Um, and it's a simple matter of adding in uh, these values into the uh, UKCA Chem Master. So these are already defined. We need to set, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we need to set Bob um, for wet deposit and add in the uh, the values like in the in the wet dep for Bob uh, for the ones that we would need. So let's add those in, and then we can see if if that has any problems. So we need to put a one in the second column. We need to increase the size of the wet deposition array, which is set at the top um, in Wetmaster. And so here we go. Add this in at the end. So we'll. And the same rules apply as we've been having with various uh, other uh, entries with the scheme and the version and things. So. And I need to make sure we've got these values correct. So uh, we're having 0 0.21 times 10 to the 6. Eight seven times ten to the four. One point two times ten to the two. Um, and the rest is zero. So that should be point two one not quite seven point two not point two one not quite seven not point two and six four and two six four and two so that's what we need to make the changes for there and in fact we can see in the worked position uh, worked example that's what we have what we do need to do though <clears throat> is make sure that we're doing it for strat drop plus chronic strat and use 131. So that should be everything that we need to do for the wet deposition. Um, so let's re rerun this and see if it works. Just check we've got those changes. Uh, uh, That's the UM one. So this, I think this change, yeah, this includes the dry deposition changes as well. We'll commit them all at the end. Um, so let's rerun, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's just check the compile.
So again, because we've we've edited Chem Master, Chem Master is used by lots of things and lots of other things are used by those things. Um, and so it will take a little bit of time to compile, so two or three minutes. But we haven't done anything to the recon, so that should should go relatively smoothly. Okay, so that's the UM compiling, so that's okay. I'll just do the reconfiguration now. So that made okay. It's now doing the recon. When it starts the atmosphere step, we can. Oh, still on the old file. Okay, so again, if there's any major issues, it should crop up on type steps one or two. Um, Just double check, it may have printed out already. So Bob, we can see that that one is appearing in the wet deposition location for Bob. And there's the wet deposition values for Bob. So they, they, they have been read in and they're being used. So unless there's any major issues that that run should complete uh, without an issue. So that started a number of iterations uh, going on there. So what I'm going to do is I'll just commit the UKCA branch because that's compiling. So that's committed. So I haven't got any uncommitted files in uh, in here. I haven't got any uncommitted files in the UM. And the suite is up to date as well. So just before we start the next 
what we'll do is while the, the job's running, we'll take a look through the next section. So this is a, a rather complicated section. So this is, is quite difficult as well. And what we're doing here is we're going to actually output the fluxes through that chemical reaction we added, the, the wet deposition, uh, the dry deposition of Alice and the wet deposition of Bob. So now we'll be able to see what those, what's going on with those. And this can be quite involved. Um, the majority of changes are made in this as add flux stat routine um, where we need to put in uh, definitions for stash code, what we're doing, um, you know, uh, various other options that we've got in, you know, are we having reaction or deposition? We can also add other things like uh, straps for drops for exchange to look for tendencies, you know, dynamical tendencies of species or net for chemical tendency, tendencies. Um, when we've got reactions, we have to give a diagnostic, you know, are we a bimolecular, terminal heterogeneous or photolysis, deposition is dry away. So there's lots of things we have to change. Um, what we'll do is copy an existing one and make the changes that are there. Um, there are also, when you're doing diagnostics, you need to be careful of the stash master codes you're using. You need to go to the right one. If you put the same stash master code for them, they will actually be summed up. This can be useful. You can create a kind of combined uh, diagnostic of, of multiple reaction fluxes, for instance, but you do need to be careful you don't make a mistake. Um, also, because it's quite complicated with the various chemical schemes, uh, some of the kind of standard diagnostic setups, you know, the diagnostic might change depending on whether or not you've got aerosol chemistry because the, the the products change and so there's it's the actual the actual routine is rather complicated so we're gonna have to go through it carefully to make sure we've not uh, not made any mistakes um we also need to obviously edit the stash master file to uh allow it to know that it's got these new fields that we're going to have um uh 3d they're all 3d fields dry position dry deposition is 3d uh throughout the boundary layer uh, wet deposition uh, can occur if there's rain, so we need to have um, 3D fields for each of those. Um, so the first thing we need to do is then edit the Azad flux stat routine and start adding stuff in. Um, just double check this is still running, it's a time step four, so that's great. So what we want to do now um, is edit the Azad flux stat routine. So um this is source control core diagnostics as that flux stuff. So this basically contains a giant long list of all the different reaction fluxes that, that have been already requested and the stash codes that they're going to be added to. And we've been given the stash codes that we're going to need to use for ours. So what we're going to do is we're going to add these in at the end um, of the of the list. Um, and we'll just have to make sure that they work because it's got to work for strat trop and for Christ strat. Um, so we'll we'll add these in. Um, so uh, what we'll do actually, we'll take a copy of this bit here. And so we need to give it a name. So we need to think about whether it's with aerosol chemistry or not. So let's do the ones with aerosol chemistry first. Um, and we know there's going to be three of them. Uh, so now we need to get the bits that we need. So let's copy a bimolecular reaction to start with. So the stash codes we need to use 
the reaction flux is 50996. So that's to there. It's bimolecular. So we're not masking off the troposphere. Uh, so that should be false. Um, we know that there are four um, four total species considered, two reactants, two products. So now what we need to do is put the Alice and Bob in to the list. And again, it needs to make sure that it's 10 characters. Alice plus OH goes to Bob. And in fact, actually, the one I've copied already contains SecOrg, which is helpful. So that's the first thing that we need to add in. Um, we then need to think about a deposition flux. So, in fact, we've got some dry and wet deposition fluxes above, which I'll copy for this. Um, although they have a false, a uh, true, sorry, for the flag, I'm going to put these to false. Not that it should really matter because it should all happen inside the troposphere anyway, but um, I want to make sure that uh, we're not. Uh, making a mistake there. So this is going to be dry deposition of Alice to 997 and Bob to, uh, wet deposition of Bob to 998. So this is a dry deposition to 997 and that would be a wet deposition to 998 and Alice plus Bob. So that should actually cover everything that we need except for closing off the array. So that's what we need for the uh, the the ones with the aerosol chemistry. What we now need to do is include the ones without the aerosol chemistry. So we've only got three reactors and products now because we're getting rid of SecOrg. So that's the only change we need to make here is to is to make that change. <clears throat> so that's fine. We've got our blocks in. These are the reactions we're going to output eventually. What we now need to do is put them into the um, uh, the kind of master list. So we know that we're going to be running with a new chemistry version. So because uh, we've got this added in, so let's create a new chemistry version here. So we've, we've got that available uh, for when we need it. Um, and then what we want to do, got our temporary arrays here. We're going to need a temporary array to store our tutorial fluxes. So now what we need is a kind of bit of logic to go through and construct this AA tutorial, UKCA tutorial fluxes. Um, and we're going to need one of those for the Strat-Trop scheme and one of those for the Cry-Strat scheme. Now, we're not going to be able to test the Cry-Strat scheme in this job because it's a Strat-Trop job, but um, we can test it with a the Strat-Trop. So we want to be inside this if config UKCA Strat-Trop. We've got, you see the other bits here where we've got if versions of this and that sort of thing. Um, so what we want to do here is uh, have a block at the end and we want to work on the tutorial fluxes. So what we'll do is have a, a KCA fluxes and then what we want to do is have it on the, the version 
So uh, we've got one with a version here. Um, we've got some air cams as well. So let's copy this and we can edit it around uh, as we need to. So let's. So we need to be making sure that we're running the right chemistry version. And then uh, if we're running with the chemistry and aerosol, then what we're going to do is um, allocate our uh, UKCA tutorial fluxes uh, to be the correct size. Uh, and it's one with ACAM and then we set them to be equivalent. So we've got our um, So we don't need to check on a different chemistry version. Uh, we do need an else though. So the else is if we're running, if that we're not running with the chemistry, aerosol chemistry. So what we'll do is copy these lines, just remove the achem. So that should give us the ifs line up. Yeah, so chem version is greater than 113. We're adding in these UKCA tutorial fluxes. So what we'll do is we'll copy that entire block because we need to also do it for Christrat. Um, so um, this here and it should still actually work exactly the same way because it's the same reaction and everything else that's included um, and then what we want to do is have a bit at the end where we have uh, we actually include it so this is a kind of if we've allocated this uh, array then we include it in the master array So so the first bit step here is to increase uh, the size of this uh, master array of reaction fluxes by the size of our new ones that are adding in. We allocate this as our chemical fluxes, and then we go through and Add it in at the end. So so if we've allocated this then we need to add it in to our code. So, and then we need to also write at the end of the routine, we need to put in a deallocate. And 
the important thing for here is you well it's better to do it in the reverse order uh, that things are allocated in And so that should be everything in the Azad Fluxstat routine. Um, and that's all we need to add in in the Azad Fluxstat routine. Now, if you were making a new type of diagnostic, you could you could actually edit the Azad Chemtox Stars routine itself to to make something new. Um, and define you know, a new definition of the Azad Fluxstat routine, as we're just making use of existing um, existing parts of uh, UKCA. Uh, we've already got code in for the chemical fluxes and wet deposition, dry deposition fluxes. We need to make that change. What we do need to do, though, is make the stash master changes. So we've done this before. We need to add in three new, uh, three new items for um, the section 50, Pressure level equivalent in section 52 and the metadata changes in stash master meta. So again, these can be uh, these can be a little bit involved. So what we want to do uh, is come here. So yeah, so the wet deposition one succeeded. And what we can just do, I'll just show you that the file. Again, you won't see anything different in the file, but uh, so you, you won't see a difference. What we will do is we should see different. We should see actual things coming in in the reaction fluxes when we've output them. So we need to do our stash master file. Now we need to be careful with the stash master file um, because. It's, it's easier to copy an existing stash master entry, but what we do need to do is make sure that we copy a reaction flux. So uh, we want to find a bimolecular reaction flux that we can copy. Um, and so let's see if we can find. So we could copy uh, in fact, we can copy these items here. Um, I'll put them down right at the end. And we want to change the order. I know we've got two wet depositions, so let's get rid of that one and find a reaction flux. Although actually they'll be they'll be the same shape, so these should be these should be sufficient to do. So what we want to do here is have nine one six and seven. Eight, we need to change our numbers here. Seven. So we've got them. Set up, we need these to be zero. Um, and so now we need to put in our
So we got our um, uh, diagnostics put in here. So this will work to output the things, but we also want the pressure level fields as well. So we need to go through to section 52 and again, copy equivalent pressure level fields. And so let's copy this, the equivalent ones that we had before. Again, these need to go right at the end of section 52. do is just get the names. So got our changes but what we do need to do is have Ooh, that fits exactly and So we've got that done, but what I need to do is the metadata. So uh, so that's in the metadata file and
So we've added in those and I'll just. I need to go down to section 52. Add these in at the end. So So there we go. Uh, so I've got those changes made now because it's a stash master change, we need to remember to commit uh, our changes. So let's go. Uh, back here. So if you do an FCM diff, you can see we've got our entries there. So let's do an FCM commit. And uh, I won't commit the UKCA changes just yet. What I will do is close the suite and reopen it just so it picks up the um, the changes. Um, and what we want to do is add in our Our new fluxes. So we just added. So So that's fine, and then uh, we can add it on the pressure levels as well. Because we've been cloning them, they've got the right height profile, steel theta, DP27, etc. We run tidy stash transform to get the hash. There we go. So if everything works correctly, this should now allow us to output our fluxes. So I'll click run. Now, if there's any issues, Initial issues with how we've implemented things we need to have a look in the compile. So
So that's compiled the UM fine, so there weren't any code issues, at least nothing obvious. Um, that's done the uh, so it should run the reconfiguration, which it is. Again, they shouldn't have any issues because it's uh, um, it's done this before. We've not made any changes for reconfiguration. Now it's running the atmosphere step. Uh, and again, this will take about 10 minutes or so to run. I'll just check it gets started. Well, in this case, we, we might want to check and just make sure it gets through to the end of the UKCA time step two and starts time step three. It's diagnostics are written out at the end of the time step. So if there's any issues with diagnostics, it will, it will turn up at that point. So that's started the UKCA chemical time step for time step two. So that started the, so when it says number of iterations, that means actually doing the, solving the kind of chemical reaction set. Um, so, we wouldn't expect it, given the, given the code changes we've made, we wouldn't expect to have any issues at this point because the, the, the problems will start occurring um, at the end of, the, uh, of this when it starts trying to add them into the reactions, uh, reaction list for outputting. Okay, so it's got through to time step three, so that should continue to the end now. So it's now getting to the end of time step six. When this is finished, we can take a look at the output file and uh, and check that we've got the reaction fluxes output correctly. So there we go. That's the end of the uh, UM job. 
uh, it'll turn up in a second, but we can take a look at the, the output file. You can see that it has just been written. That job's finished. So, if this has worked correctly, yet we've got our pressure level fields. And further down, we should have our, yep, here we go. So, let's see if this has worked. Yep, there we go. We're getting some reaction fluxes. So, this is the chemical reaction flux. This is the dry deposition of Alice, which is occurring everywhere. And this is the wet deposition of Bob, which is again only occurring where Bob is. So those are all working correctly. So that's great. Um, so now we finished the kind of main thrust of the chemical, uh, chemical work. Um, what we need to do now is have a think about some aerosols. So we're going to be using Python again for this. We'll be using our Jupyter notebook. Um, and what, we, what we're going to be doing is outputting some new aerosol diagnostics to uh, some aerosol diagnostics and then using these to calculate various quantities. Um, so to do this, we're going to have to make a new time profile. Um, this is output only in radiation time steps, a new domain profile uh, for some existing diagnostics that we don't have the domain profile for. And we're going to output these on both model levels and pseudo levels. So we're going to remove the existing entry um, for the accumulation mode that's output to T3 out of me. So let's do that last one first uh, before we forget. So that is section two, item 301, because we're going to be doing it for an instant, not as a three hourly meme, but we're going to be doing it uh, as um, uh, all time steps. So let's uh, move this section. So we've got that removed. And what we need to do now is output all of these. So uh, there's quite a few to add. Um, it's just a matter of kind of going through them and making sure that we have them all as we need. Um, the first thing we'll need to do is make a new time profile. So we'll do that before we add in these uh, new uh, these new diagnostics. So let's go to the time profiles. So these are the existing ones we have. Click on there and go add new section. This one's going to be called uh, uh, this one is the um, T rad. So we're outputting on radiation time steps for this one. So we've not got any time processing. The name is going to be T rad. We're on time steps at regular intervals. We start on the first time step. Never stop outputting, but the frequency is every third time step because the radiation scheme is called every 90 minutes. So that's one minus one, that's three. I start and I end on every, yeah. So we've got that for T rad. And we'll run tidy slash macro again at the end, and this will we'll rename it when we've done the. Uh, actually, let's rename it now. Uh, 
So now it should be called trad underscore hash. And there it is. So the next one we need to do is the domain profile. And this is a bit more complicated because we've got pseudo levels that we need to output to. Um, and uh, which are these? Uh, the AO, uh, AO's optical thickness pseudo levels. But we also need to output pseudo levels and model levels, which is why it's a bit more complicated. So uh, we do the same thing. We go to domain. We go add new section. We need to view it. So this is called D3DAR. And we've got it defined on model theta levels on the Charlie Phillips grid. Well, it's currently on rows, we've got on two. Um, so we need provide range, top and bottom level numbers. Provide range. And we need level one, level 38. So PLT is radiation bands for capturing aerosol optical depth. So there we go. Now this P list is where we need to get these numbers from. And we need to have six boxes to enter these numbers into. There we go. So these numbers are Zero point three eight, zero point four four, zero point five five, zero point six seven, and zero point eight seven and one point zero two. Oh, that one's so now let's I'll have to edit the file because it's somehow saved that as a string. So I'll edit the file at the end when we've done this. Um Full model area, land and sea points. Uh, I mean is none, I weight is none, TS is false. I mean is none, I weight is none. So, right. So I'm going to save this. I'm just going to close this off. And I'll edit that to get rid of that error with the... So we can see this here. It doesn't look anything issue to me. Let's try close edit again and see if the error's actually there. Not an integer. It's PS list. That's right, yes. Oh. Sorry, I misread. They just need to be one, two, three, four, and five, and six. Hmm. 
Okay, there we go. So that's fine. And uh, what we want to do is run tidy stars transform again to get the name correct. So there we go, D3DAR. So we've got that added in. Now we're not changing uses profile, we're keeping it to UPA. So what we need to do now is add in all these things that we've got here. Um, and D3DAR uh, is output for five, S, section two, item 530 and item 540. Um, and the rest, we're going to need to do on uh, we're going to need to do on the radiation. Everything is done on the radiation type steps. So um, all these other ones uh, will be. Uh, diags. Um, sorry, the, the optical depths will be diag AOT and the radiation fluxes at the top will be uh, just diag because we're, they're, they're going to be a single level. These ones which are optical depths are kind of single levels, but on each of those pseudo levels. So it's diag AOT and uh, the last two at the end will be this D3DAR, which is the full, full domain with... Uh, the AOT uh, levels. So uh, what I'll do is I'll find a diag uh, and I'll just clone this one initially. And so the variables that I need to add are here, so 1207, 208. So once you've got one set up, it's easy to change. So uh, yeah. So and this one needs to be two oh eight, and then we have two two oh five. Do that. I wanted to clone. So save those. Now we need two, two eight five, and then three hundred to three oh five. And this one's all these are all going to be diag AOTs from now on. Until we get to the last two. So do that and change that to Diag AOT. Then Then just go up. It's three oh five. So, 
So we've got 207, 208, 205, 285, 300, so 305. 7285, 285, 300, 305. So now we need section 2585 and 240 to 245. And these are the absorption optical depths, which again are on bi KOT. Two five eight five. There we go. And then now these are back down again to two forty absorption optical depth. Okay, so we've got all those ones, that, and it's just the last two, 530 and 540, um, for the 3D values, which is where we need the D3DAR. So let's, doesn't matter which one we clone, we'll fix these things later. Uh, section 2, 530. DAR and clone that one. Okay, so we should have added in. So we've got 17, I think, no, 19 that we've added in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. You've added in section one, two, seven, two, eight, two, eight, section two, two, five, section two, two, forty, two, four, five, section two, two, eight, five, two, five, two, eight, five, three hundred to three, oh, five. 300, 305, 535, 40, and 585. 35, 40, 5. So we've got everything in. So this should be all we need to do for this particular step. So um, what we're going to do now is run the tidy stash transform on everything. And Save and the suite. So we know it should compile and run the recall because we've not made any code changes. Uh, it may have issues with stash. What I'm going to do is just make sure my branches are up to date. So Um, don't think we have any changes to that one, and we'll commit our suite once we've got the branches output okay. So, yep, recalls running.
and atmosphere is running. So there we go. Again, if we have any issues, in this case, if we have any issues with the diagnostics, it will show up at the end of time step three. Uh, start of time step four should fail because we, we're we doing a radiation time steps, which is every third time step in this job. Other configurations might have radiation time steps that are one hour, or, uh, you know, three hours, that sort of thing. So we're getting to the end of time step six. Everything's worked okay so far. And once it's finished, we can just double check the fields are there in the files before um, running through the Python. So there we go, it's finished. Um, let's use xconv. And right, so now we've got our, so this, the way it looks in xconv is we have, um, six uh, six entries for each of these, one for each pseudo level, but when it, so it's actually a 5D array, essentially. Um, and we have all our optical depths with six levels because they're on Diag AOT. Um, so that should have everything that we need. If we now pick up one of these, plot the first one, we can see it's got some Got some numbers in it. Um, what we want to do now, though, is use the. Uh, so we've, we've output this, and now we can move on to the next step, which is where we're actually going to start playing around with this data a little bit. Um, so, what we're going to be doing now is calculating the optical depth, um, and we're going to be using the Python notebook for this. So this. Uh, we're going to be using the 0.55 microns. It actually all does it for us in the Python notebook. And again, Python notebooks, there are two versions, CF Python version and an Iris version. So what we can do is find our um, CF version, which is here. We need to change our sweet ID and then run it. So this reads in our data file with the stash codes that we need for calculating the optical depth does a bit of uh, sums it, make, makes a field for it, sums them up and then plots it. So here we are, there's our optical depth and then it writes it out to NetCDF because we're going to need this later. And we can do exactly the same in Python. Um, the way it reads them in looks a bit different. The way we do the summing up looks a bit different, but essentially it's the, oh, uh, I haven't changed the sweet ID. Here we go. So essentially it's the same. So the iris plot is, looks a bit smaller, but you can see the peaks are in the same place. Um, the scale is the same, but it saved it to, to a file. So that's great. We've done that one. You can see the, the values. Um, we're plotting pseudo level three, um, which it's picking out here. Um, 
uh, and here because we've got our PS levies two because Python starts counting from zero to zero one two. Next one we've got to calculate the single scattering albedo. So we have a Python notebook for this as well. Um, um, so so we will run that one. So this calculates things slightly differently where we, we need the absorption optical depth and the aerosol optical depth and we one over the other and take that away from one and this gives our single scattering albedo. So here we are, we get our Python equivalent script. Okay, run that. So we're, we're getting the AODs and the uh, AAODs coming in, calculating our components. So it's taking a little bit of time to read them in. Then here we go. This is our iris field. This is our CF field. You can see there. Are the same. Um, now we need to calculate the top atmosphere downward radiative flux. So um, we're going to be using four. So there we go. So you can see we're getting getting this field out. The iris field might look a bit different, again, because the plot's slightly different. You see the difference in time. Iris is a little bit slower to read in these fields. And here we are. Again, the plot looks different because the color scale is different, but it's, it's showing the same data. And now we want to calculate this aerosol optical depth and 3D aerosol extinction. Um, so, come back to our Jupyter notebook. Um, and So what, what, what this also does um, is read in the, the field calculated in task 12.2 uh, and does a difference. So we can see actually that we're getting some slight differences between these two quantities. Um, very, very small differences, but there are still uh, some differences between the two of them. And if we take the iris one, um, again, this will read in the iris equivalent version and do a difference. So there's our AOD, and here's our difference map. And again, color scale is different, but points are 
in the same place as we had before. We've got this saved as a difference. Um, and now, now what we're going to do is do some code changes and we're going to need to, to rerun all our uh, differences again. So uh, what we're going to do here is um, you can see we've got our uh, files here. So if I just I want to make a backup of these before we start anything. Um, so we've got all our files. If we move these. Uh, So here, so we've still got all those files saved. It means we can, when we, we finish with this code change, we can take a difference of our files. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we're going to save them. We'll save the opposite different files or copy our old files and we'll be able to do some differences. So um, what we want to do here is edit. Uh, so so SecOrg is not output we've got a little hint we need to move it from the diagnostics and it's only could it know it needs to have this this a qualifier so if we go back to our uh ukca code the chem master array so so we've got our two reactions here and in fact what we can do is remove one of them because it's the same in both. So we'll get rid of this one. And we don't need the A qualifier. It's going to be all the time. Um, and we've actually reduced the number of reactions in this list, so we can take that down. Uh, by one so to seven. Um, and then we need to think about as our flux stat now, because we've only got one set of Let's search for tutorial. So we've only got one set of reactions that we've got here. We said we can get rid of this ACAM set. So that should be all we need because we don't have that ACAM anymore. So we haven't got anything with this underscore ACAM. Um, and that should be all we need to change because we've got exactly the same slash codes that we're going to. It's just we've removed this, this ACAM term. Um, and we've got this. Uh, Manus is still fine, but what we've only got is this single reaction for both. So we've got all our files saved. Uh, and what we'll do is just rerun our suite. So 
So again, we might have an issue with compile. Oh, so we've had a problem. So let's see where we've gone wrong. Um, master. Oh, I'm edited the wrong thing. Um, yes, so. What I should have done was edit the Bimol master down to 10. So that's where that error has come from. Let's try that again. So hopefully we've done enough to get it to pass this time. Yeah, so that's compiled the UM, so that should 
run recon and uh, we can see how that gets on. This is just compiling up the reconfiguration as well. So that's reconfiguration compiled. Reconfiguration is now running. That's the atmosphere step now running. So we've had a job failure in time step three, which is interesting. Um, Not sure why it's had a job failure in time step three.
So I don't, I don't quite know why that job is finished. Well, I, I might just try rerunning it just to see if it could be an issue with the virtual machine. If the worst comes to the worst, what we could do is what's called a row sweet clean, which is where we recompile everything from scratch, but of course that'll take about 25, 30 minutes to, to run. Um, so is isn't ideal because um, it has to recompile everything again. But uh, let's let's give that a go. Um, let's just commit the changes to the suite. So let's just check her make. Again, that should be quick. So let's So for some reason this is just rerunning the job has allowed it to continue. I'm speculating that um, potentially there could have been a process on the virtual machine that maxed out the memory, potentially and caused the job to crash. You can see this little green bar here. It's completely full. That's kind of how much we're, we're pushing the usage on the virtual machine. So that may be just a, a slight blip. It seems to be running okay now and uh, it's getting to the end of time step six and then should be should be finished. In fact, there it is, that's completed. Um, uh, so, that's done. And in fact, that's the last time we need to run the unified model during these exercises. Uh, what we will do though, is uh, open up and uh, take a look at the, um uh I take a look at the files so um what we want to do ah in fact the the, the files that we needed um what we want to do is rerun rerun the previous scripts but change the the names of the output files so in fact what I'll do is copy the uh Copy them back here. So we've got them 
in the in the correct directory, and then what we'll do is rerun uh, outputting um, uh, this one. We run these ones onwards, but instead of writing to uh, We'll write to one two six because what we want to do is read in the one two six AOD SSA and TOAs, and then we can do the differences. So we're going to write to one two six AOD. Let's rerun this from scratch. If we do it. Minus LTR, we can see that 126AD has appeared. Um, and let's at the end write to 126 SSA. We need to write to 126. Six TOA. So when those are finished, we can we can view that we've got our files there. And we need to read these in. We've got our original files. So we've got our original files, our new equivalents, and we'll be writing out some differences. Uh, and so we don't need to change anything here. We can just click run and it will calculate and plot the differences. So we can see some differences in AOD because we're not forming and we expect it, it's kind of matching where Bob was appearing, we're not having the secondary uh, organic compound, it's not forming any SOA. Um, again, minor differences to the albedo and TOA relative flux because of it. So we can do that. We can do exactly the same with the iris uh, versions. So um, so let's bring up the iris one and we want to write to Um, so I'll just check has that been written. So yeah, we've got the that one. So we need the two, three. And again, these differences are small. You won't see them in the the base plots produced from these. We need to really see them in the difference difference plots we produced from the last script. So just So that should have written, uh, and if we do an ls, 
you can see we've got those versions and let's just run the task script here we're reading in those and so all these all these scripts are available on uh, github you can view these uh, and download them and play around with them yourself as you as you need to so again we can see the similar differences that we saw in the uh, the uh, cf plots So that's the end of tutorial 12. So that's the end of the, the tutorials that deal with actually running the unified model. And the final tutorial is more on looking at output from existing simulations that have been run or as part of a big model into comparison project and, and providing some example things that you can plot and also asking you to do some playing around with these plots and, and trying them out. So um, I'll point you to where the GitHub is for this uh, at the end. Um, oh, in fact, I can, I can do that now. Um, the, the link is available there. All the scripts you can see are, are available there. And again, I also have work solutions through for the practicals, which we'll, we'll, we'll show you as we, as we work through here. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to plot and process data with RS and CF. And we've got these example notebooks that are found. Um, one thing you need to think about is, you know, do things seem easier or harder in particular packages? Is it better or worse? Uh, you know, I think that they're, they're pretty similar um, in how they in how they do things. Some things are slower than others. Um, and we'll see as we run, run through these, uh, you know, what those might be. Um, there's a few bits of data that are are used for this. We use the Bodica Scientific Total Climb Ozone data set. I've done a bit of pre-processing on this to make it easier to use for these scripts, um, changing some units uh, and that sort of thing, and making a single file rather than a load of monthly files. And I'd like to thank Bodica Scientific for providing that data. Um, in terms of the model output, we've got some runs as part of a, a NERC funded project called Axis that are provided in the standard PP file format uh, that you've been uh, that will be used that you 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 will get used to if you run it on a HPC. It's essentially a 32 bit version of the the fields file format we've been plotting so far in these tutorials. Um, and then there's two output uh, data set outputs from the chemistry climate model initiative. Uh, one from the first phase, the CC line one. This is where we did some UK UKCA simulations at a very old UN version, so version 7.3 compared to the version 13.0 running at the moment. And this is uh, a similar. Uh, horizontal resolution as the job you're running as part of this tutorial, but are more levels in the in the vertical. So 60 levels up to about 85 kilometers. Um, and then the, the second was data produced for the, the, the CCMI 2022. We've actually got three ensemble members here. Um, and we have uh, three ensemble members uh, plotted. So you can you can pick these up. And these are run using UKSM1 essentially with a with a few tweaks. So the first one we're going to look at is the total total uh, zonal mean total column ozone. So we can pick up the Jupiter lab or we can look at the first script. Um, this picks up various bits. Um, if we run this, it picks up the data sets that we have. We're not needing to look at the data set that we produced during this these tutorials because they're, they're only three hours long. These runs are from say 1960 to 2020 or or longer uh so we can we can take a look at what's going on with those um so the first thing we're doing in the cf script is we've defined where the data is available we've read in the observationals and observational data and what we've done is done a zonal mean and then we're plotting uh this data uh and then we're going to read in so the UKCA data, this stash code here is the stash code for the total column ozone uh, or the, the, the ozone column diagnostic. Uh, that's that's going to be read in. We're going to do exactly the same, collapse it for a zonal mean and then plot it. Um, and then what we're doing here is we're kind of plotting on top of each other. So we can just plot the uh, the 
the observation the observations are plotted as the black lines and the UKCA plot uh, that the data is plotted as the filled contours. Um, here we're going to read in the CCMI data. Again, we've done a, a zonal mean um, and uh, we're just comparing from 1978 onwards and we're going to plot uh, plot these here. So we've got our our values that we're plotting, we're plotting against the observational values. Uh, we can see these here. And there's a few things you could try. You could plot members from the CCMI ensemble, and you could plot an ensemble mean of the three members. You know, how would you calculate this ensemble mean? And there is a hint. You might need to delete some auxiliary coordinates. You'll see as you run it that they might have a have a problem with it. So in fact, what we can do is we can go and have a look at the example script that does this uh, in the solutions page, and you can. We'll, we'll work through this. Uh, so this is, starts off in the same way. It's a copy of the previous script. Reading the model data, what we're interested in here is the ensembles. Um, and so we've got uh, actually going to have three ensemble members. The, the units are in meters rather than Dobson units. So we're going to convert to Dobson units for the, uh, for the actual plotting. Um, We can calculate the ensemble mean by uh, creating a mean over these fields here and then uh, making a copy of one of the ensemble members and then copying the data into it. Um, we do our zonal mean and we can plot this. So we can plot our individual ensemble members and we can plot our ensemble mean of the three ensemble members that are there. Um, so that's how you might plot that. Um, of course, I provided a, an iris version as well, so we can take a look at how iris does things. Um, we start by defining our data again. We can load our observational data. We can do a zonal mean of it. This is slightly faster, you'll notice, doing a zonal mean in iris than in, in CF. Um, we can do our contour plots. We can read in our iris cubes. We can do our contour plots again, and then we can produce our zonal mean. We, we stretch it out so you can see it more clearly. And again, we can do our 10-year uh, for CCMI run. Uh, sorry, 10, 10 year, we've got these 10-year files for CCMI one. Um, read them in and do the plotting again, stretch the plot. So you might see how this is done for uh, CCMI 2022 data. Again, we've read it in the same way. We're doing an ensemble mean in the same way. Um, again, we're collapsing. Uh, here are our plots. They plot in sequence. Plotting is maybe slightly slower in iris than in CF. And again, here's our plotting of the the full set. So the next task that gives us our hint that we had in our um, in our uh, Jupyter notebook. The next one is we want to plot, um, say, a regional time evolution of total column ozone. What we're looking at here is total ozone column, and we can plot both in iris and CF. Um, so plot, start with the CF script first. Um, we have to read in our different ensemble members and our different data sets. Um, what I've defined after that is a function and what this function does is it will calculate means over latitude bounds. So we define in a kind of lower latitude to start with and a higher latitude to stop. So it's the, the default is going, it's kind of a, a near global 60 to 60, 60 south to 60 north uh, set of bands. Um, but what we're actually going to use 
in this plotting is going from minus 90 to minus 60. So just looking over the, uh, the South Pole, uh, the South Polar region. Um, and it will mask each of the ensemble members in our CCMI 2022 ensemble and each of the individual uh, ones we read in previously. We're going to normalize our calendars so that we all start and end at the same time. Um, I've done a little bit of a hack here to convert the Gregorian calendar from the nudge run uh, in the axis plots and the uh, observational data to kind of bring it up to, to about the same scale. Um, calculating our ensemble means, a standard deviation, which we can use uh, for the uh, for the CCMI 2022 ensemble. Uh, I've got a clever little function here to, to be able to get the, the names. We've got our names of our things here, and then we're plotting our plots. And we can see that actually UKCA is doing pretty well compared to these Bodecker observations, especially this nudged axis simulation, which actually is doing pretty well. And given that the model is nudged, we would hope it would do quite well. Um, maybe slightly low bias with our 2022 ensemble and relatively good with our um, um, sorry the that that's an incorrect uh, title that should be the uh, um, the CCMI one and what we what we've been asked to do here for the further exercises is to plot different regions so say six, uh, mar diff like March for instance rather than a uh, September, 60 north to 90 north, and maybe try plotting an annual mean and how might we produce an annual mean each year. And in fact, we've got a hint, you know, how to do a statistical collapse in CF. Um, and this, so this this is the CF help page, this tells you how to do statistical collapses. And in fact, if we look at our um, solutions, we can see that. So we'll start with the March, uh, March values. Um, and these are, I mean, it works in basically exactly the same way that we've been running before, except what we've got is we're going 60 north to 90 north for our um, masking. And uh, we're going to do I month equals three, which is March. So again, it takes a little bit of time to do these calculations and read in the, the data. And we can see we've got it plotted here. Now we have our uh, data doesn't match quite as well. Um, if we to look at our annual, so this is where we need to think about statistical collapse. So uh, if we set this to run, uh, we're doing 60 north to 90 north. And this is our statistical collapse. So we're doing this F dof, you know, this is field dot collapse time we're meaning and we're grouping by year so this will and this is it's a kind of one line command but actually it's quite a lot of work to uh, to do that still reading in the data at the moment but it might take a little bit of time to work on this cell because it has to to do these uh, these collapses for each of them
but as you can see, it's taking quite a bit of time um, to do this. And in fact, if we went back to our, uh, we can look at the work that's being done. There is quite a lot of work that's being done. So that's finished. And once it's done that, it's pretty quick to then produce these annual means. As you see, there's a bit of a spread in these now. Um, but the nudge run is still doing relatively well compared to the uh, compared to the observations. So let's take a look at the uh, how this might be done in Iris. Um, again, we define our values, we load in our data, so the load can take a bit more time in Iris and we get all these warning messages uh, about them. Uh, we've got our masking, picking September, we plot the data, and here we've got our plot, and again, very similar type of plot that we had, that we had with CF. Uh, we're going to plot these, plot these uh, things, and we one of annual mean in iris in iris we don't do a statistical collapse we do this aggregated by um, and so aggregated by is what we need to consider uh, for uh, for when we do this looking at our work solutions so let's look at the march one first again very similar we're uh, changing the month to be three and the lower lat, higher lats to be for the northern hemisphere. And there's our March plot. So that's again quite quick. If we take our annual mean, um, so this is what we're doing. We're doing aggregated by year. And what we want to first want to do is we need to add in a year. So we use this cohort categorization, and this adds in a year, um, and then we do this aggregated by year, and this will allow it to work. And in fact, there we go, there's our plot. And again, very similar to the CF plot. Um, so let's look at tutorial three. And tutorial three, we're going to be plotting uh, specific months uh, in kind of projections. Got a little hint about, again, how to perform system collapses and aggregated by, because we're going to need to use that to produce a kind of mean of these, these things. Um, so let's run through uh, this. We're again, we're reading in all our data. Uh, we're going to select, uh, we're going to pick up our individual files and we're going to want March 2011. Say so that's an interesting March because there was a, a depletion event that occurred in that year. So we want to have a look at it more, more carefully. Um, we've got our kind of subspacing of our data. Here is our plotting. So what we have here is the uh, this is the UKCA total column ozone, and this is the Bodica. So we can see that while the we we are getting an ozone kind of an ozone hole appearing, it's not as strongly seen in the UKCA data as we might have in the um, uh, in the observations. If we take a difference, we can see those difference plots um, using either as percentage or as absolute differences. Um, in terms of what we're asked to do. 
So we're going to be trying for some different dates. So say so September 2002, um, and maybe having a look at uh, CCMI1 and CCMI 2022. So let's have a, uh, let's first look at September. So it's exact, basically exactly the same. We're picking out month and year differently though. Um, and this is then subsetting the data down and uh, performing basically exactly the same calculation. So here we go, get our ozone hole again. Good, uh, relatively good uh, in terms of where the the locations are, but the values may be slightly different. And again, we look at our difference plots. Um, if we were to look at our CCMI ensemble, um, so we're reading in our ensemble means again, and we're going to be. Now, this is where we. This is where it can take quite a lot of time because what we're doing is we're collapsing. Uh, a, we're producing a climatology. Uh, of our data from say for say the year 2000 so we're doing from between 95 to 2005 we're going to be producing a climatology from, from that period and then uh, so each of our ensemble members is a climatology around the year 2000 and then we're going to produce an ensemble mean of that um, so uh, first thing we've done is this uh, got it. So these these statistical collapses take quite a lot of time to to produce. And what we what we have is our CCMI. 2021 data on our CCMI1 data is the, the two that we're looking at. So we can uh, we can see a difference between our our values. We're getting an error. It's a bit odd. Try rerunning this again. So we get for some reason we're getting an error on this uh, 
CCMI one plot, but actually it did work in the past um, to do the calculation. And in fact, this is what we should have seen uh, if we were uh, able to get this script to run correctly. And this this allows us to to plot the climatological differences and the ensemble differences between these various things. Um, what I'll do is I'll I'll try running the uh, the iris scripts um, to see if there's a similar error for those. But something must have cropped up in between me running these originally and running these now. Um, anyway, this is the iris script. Um, again, it's doing very similar things. It's reading in our data. Um, we're doing our projections. So again, we can see, uh, you know, not quite as as high values, not quite as deep, but you know, similar sorts of shape. And again, you can see if we plot the differences uh, that are there. Uh, if we look at the solutions, So here's our September again, similar sorts of shape and regions, but not quite as deep. Uh, there's our differences. And if we to go for our CCMI, So here we're, we're doing slightly differently. We've got to define where our points are to read them in. Um, again, we've got this aggregated by month. We did it aggregated, you know, done aggregated by already. Um, we did aggregated by year to get annual means, we aggregated by month to get climatologies. And uh, again, this could take quite a bit of time to read in the data. Um, and uh, find various things. Uh, I think we've maybe hit the limit on the uh, I think we've been pushing our virtual machine a bit a bit hard and it's uh, <laughs> it stopped working so I'll just give that a bit of a restart one second. Uh, so I've just tried uh, rebooting the uh, the instance so I can try and get back. I think it did a little bit too much Python and got a bit confused. So what we can what we can try doing is uh, let's try running the um, the CF one that had some issues and just see if that actually was the cause of the issues we were having. Um, in fact, what I'll also do is just check uh, how full my disk space is on my instance. No, we should have enough space. So maybe it just uh, it's using a bit too much memory up. So let's let's see if this one can rerun. If not, we'll just run the I, the Iris versions.
Okay, so that seems to have actually done the collapse this time. So it seems to giving the, the system a reboot to uh, solve the issues, at least with that particular error, I think. Again, the, 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 the amount of memory and, and CPU that we have on these machines isn't great. It's two, two cores, eight gigs of memory. If it's hitting the bit the edge of the memory, uh, for whatever reason, it could it could cause some issues. If you're running this on a virtual machine of your own, uh, I'd suggest maybe having a slightly larger memory if, if possible. I'm also running these through quite quickly and that could also affect things. In fact, we can see the usage here. Um, so this has now got to do three collapses, which is why it's taking more time. Um, but once, hopefully once it's done the collapse, it's then relatively quick to, uh, to do the plots. So that took a little, that took a few minutes to, to complete, um, but now we can see we've got our plots. So these are the plots that we saw similarly with the Irish, uh, Iris runs. Um, and if we, uh, we were plotting our Iris one, so I'll save this. Um, we ran, we ran that one, but we hadn't run the equivalent to the CCMI run. So let's run that. So again, our Iris and CF do things a little differently. The Iris uh, can be a bit slower to read in data, especially um, uh, model data, but it can be faster when it comes to doing things like collapses. Um, so there's our, there's our data there. Um, and the last tutorial is we're going to be plotting some zonal mean uh, time plots. Um, so we'll have a look at our, our ones here. So let's start with the CF again. So again, we have another collapse. Uh, so collapse is used in CF to do quite a lot of things, zonal meaning, uh, annual meaning, that sort of thing, climate pusing climatologies, whereas IRIS tends to separate these out into different uh, different functions like aggregated by and uh, collapsed and things, which we'll see in the IRIS, uh, in the IRIS plots. What these collapsed bits here means we're doing meaning over time within years. So the CF.M means months. And then we're meaning over years for over our years to produce this 1995 to 2005 range. And we've got our, our year range here, uh, which we can see.
And after it's completed that one, it then does a zonal mean. Uh, and then we're able to do the plots. There we go, we've got some plots. So, got a nice uh, climatology. Um, and we're going to be doing the same for the Bodica data set. And we've got a nice overplot. So we've got our observations in black and our KCA data in the contour plots. Um, and we're going to just do some differences between the 1960s and the 2000s. So we're going to do 60 to 69 and 2000 to 2009, and we can do a difference between those. So we've got that done, we've got our differences, we can see the differences between the 1960s and uh, the 1990s. This is uh, absolute and these are percentages. So we asked for some further exercises, we might try the CCMI ensemble against the ensemble mean, also comparing axis data against the CCMI 2022 data. Um, so the axis, so the axis Chemistry and CSAM and two chemistry is very different, uh, very, sorry, very similar. All the configuration is very similar, so the differences will be the use of nudging. So if we look at our work solutions, we can take a look um, and uh, run through run through this. And we'll, it's all in one script, it's not done, it's not done separately. So that's finished now. It takes, say, so CF takes quite a long time to do the collapse. Uh, and we can see we've got our uh, uh, differences from our nudge to the ensemble mean. Um, and we can see the differences uh, that are produced here. Uh, absolute and percentage differences. Um, let's take a look at the, uh, the iris, uh, iris versions. Uh, 
for this one. So we'll start with the uh, basic plot where we just uh, produce the uh, produce the plots. So there we go. And here are our percentage differences and absolute differences. And again, if we go to our work solutions. run through these and here we go so and that's the end of the UKCH tutorials um, if you, as I say, you can you can view these uh, all these uh, Jupyter notebooks on GitHub. The link is through the uh, UKSA website. Um, uh, you might also want to consider looking at. Uh, so there's a series of scripts here that have been produced that we use to convert UKSA data for CCMI. 2022, which is uh, some of the data we've been looking at as part of these tutorials. Um, and you can see kind of how this works, how it works on Jasmine, the data analysis platform and using the batch system uh, called the Lotus cluster, how we convert these things through. And uh, you can view these on stumble mean files using NC dump. So if we were to look at these files, uh, so if we go to uh, the, tutorials direct, uh, the tutorials directory, uh, uh, we can see we got our uh, the UKSM strat trop is our uh, um, TCMI twenty twenty two. So let's look at our one. So we can see we've got all our. So the, this is kind of with standard metadata required that we have um, uh, defining all these variables and these global attributes that define the experiments that we ran, uh, that we ran and the licensing and everything else that's necessary for the model into comparison project. Um, so you take a look through those um, and that's the end of the, the actual practical part of the tutorial. Um, under the additional resources, you can see uh, slides and recordings from previous uh, previous UKCA training events. Um, and what will happen is the, the recordings from the 2022 event will also be uploaded here very soon. So thank you very much. Uh, and I hope you have uh, uh, good experiences with UKCA. <laughs>